um, I'm Hannah. I'm normally the producer here at Sewing Street, but today John can't get in, his car's broken down, so I'm here. You might have saw me yesterday. I was on for a little bit because there was a spider in the studio <laughs> and Bix had to go upstairs. So I didn't expect to be on so soon, um, but I'm here which is probably my worst nightmare, I can't tell you, so please, please be kind. Um, but today we also have a special code because I'm here, I think they were trying to make it better for you. But if you spend £50, um, you get £10 off if you put the code in HANA, which is H-A-N-N-A-H, -N -N -H, at checkout, or say it to customer service team in one single transaction. But I just thought I'd tell you that straight away as a kind of, you know, a feel better that I'm here. <laughs> because you were probably expecting John and very excited. But you've got me, I'm afraid. Also, I'm going to apologise now. I have really bad hay fever. And um, I also like gardening, so my nails are dreadful. So that's just all my, um, all my please be kind to me things at the beginning. But, oh yeah, can you message the studio? That'd be nice. We have an um, email. Um, studio at sewingstreet.com. I forgot I had to read that then because normally the presenter reads it. <laughs> um, we also have Facebook, um, which we have, <laughs> thanks Joe, which we have our fans page and our official page. Um, it's probably better to go to our official page because we've got Hayley B watching that and we're a bit stretched today because it's just me and Joe in the studio. So normally I'd be looking at the messages as well and checking the email and things. But if you go to facebook.com slash Sewing Street TV, you can message in there. And please, please be nice to me. <laughs> That's all I can say. Oh, I really look like my mum then. That was, that was a really scary moment seeing yourself here. Um, oh. Anyway, right, I'm going to start with the early bird because that's where we begin, basically. So today we've got a bundle. Joe, you're there, but you've got to put the graphics in. <laughs> today we've got a bundle of fabric. Um, you've got half a metre of Riley Blake. Um, you've got half a metre of your Rose and Hubble with st stars and half a metre of your mix of fabric. Um, first time we've done this bundle before and you get a saving of three pounds. I want to show you. Oh, that's fine. Joe's apologising because he did something wrong, you know, not me. <laughs> Joe's our director, by the way, so I will be talking to him a lot today because I'm nervous. Um, just going to open this up because this is what half a metre looks like. So you're getting three of those. This is where I won't fold either. Yeah, these are part of our mixer range. So we do have these by the half meter on the website. I know we're actually very limited at the moment, but it's something we always reorder because they're really popular, because it's quite nice not to just put a solid color in your quilt. It's still got a bit of movement. That sounds really strange, but um, like movement to the eye? I don't know, that's a weird phrase. But you know, you don't want to block color all the time. There's a time and a place, but you don't, it can become a bit like lifeless. Yeah, it's nice to have that and not just be pattern on pattern all the time. So I really like those. And I really like that about this bundle. You've kind of got that kind of more subdued, but with still some interest. And then kind of a classic, classic stars. This is a slightly lighter weight one, this one, but it will work just the same, just as long as you're aware of it. This is a poplin weight. Um, when we say that, it, they are all 100% cotton. It's just the way that that is woven, um, which causes this to be slightly lighter weight. And they are a bundle. They do go beautifully together. But think of them as separate projects as well, because this could be bag lining. This could be the outer of a bag. Because um, it's got little stars. I'm going like a little bag for pyjamas. Do people keep pyjama bags? I feel like that's something I'd like to do, and I'm never organised enough. Or like, as a gifting idea, you could make some pyjamas and then put them in a little fabric bag rather than wrapping paper. Oh, the, the folding I am doing. You hear us talking about folding here. And this is, this is not how it should be. Um, and then this is your designer fabric from Riley Blake. <laughs> Sorry, Joe is laughing at me in my ear and I don't normally have talk back. It's talk back's this like earpiece. He'll shout at me for revealing it all the secrets. I know, I'll be cast out of the magic circle. Um, this is really nice because from a distance, it just looks like a normal spot. 
and then it's balls of yarn. We were talking before the show, actually, me and Joe, his um, girlfriend, Hetty, Hett I called her, Hattie. I'm so sorry, that's really insulting. I'm looking over there because he's behind that wall. I'm sorry, Hattie. Um, he's knocking on the wall. I got scared that someone was at the door. <laughs> I've said to Joel, I'm doing this as if it's like a big game we're playing, not that I'm on telly. Um, his um, girlfriend, Hattie, um, is it her mum does a lot of like crochet and knitting? So this would be kind of, yeah, but it would be perfect to like storage for wool. You can make like a gift for someone so they have a bag for their wool or even like a lot of us do more than one craft. Like, OK, so. I do sewing, being here. Not very well, but I enjoy it. And I do I do hand sewing mainly. I've got a sewing machine and things like that. I don't do knitting and crochet, but I know my mum does. And then I've got a really good friend of mine. So she did, she did embroidery um, at the Royal School of Needlework, actually. And then she does a lot of knitting. Like, she's just had a baby, and I feel like the baby's just in knitwear the whole time. So it must have been very hot. <laughs> <laughs> for Rowan <laughs> the last few weeks but um I know that she then also sews so she could make like storage things for around the house because you keep on buying things to craft with don't you whatever craft it is your bundle will come lovely folded up you get half a meter of each saving three pounds um, yeah um, John oh John's messaged in oh Oh, thank you so much, John. John, who's meant to be here, but I'm afraid his car's broken down. We'd much prefer it if you were here, John. I'm sure everyone at home is like shouting at the telly. It's like, please come back. Who is this lady <laughs> with the crazy hair? <laughs> um, but yeah, John, John unfortunately can't come in today because his car's broken down. So he's just sent his love on Facebook, which is really nice of him. Thanks. This is incredibly nerve wracking. It, I... I feel like I'm in some kind of social experiment, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't know if I'm meant to say that. But anyway, right, so this is your early bird. Um, you're getting your saving on that. Remember, if you do spend £50 in one single transaction today, so that means um, you can have multiple things in your basket that add up to £50, and then you go to checkout. So I'm normally urging you to check out straight away, but... Um, the thing is today you might want to wait a bit longer so then you can take advantage of that offer which is when you have 50 pounds put in the code hanna at checkout that's h-a-n-n-a-h -N -N feel like i'm at the bank you know when they ask your name um, um you check put the code hanna in and you get 10 pounds off a 50 pounds transaction so you might want to wait a little bit longer that's kind of counter counter what i would normally say if i was producing but um, I think that's probably the best way today. And I'll get Joe to keep an eye on stock levels. So if there's anything very low, are you doing this, Joe? Oh, yeah. You can tell us and well, then I'll let you know it's going to be sold out soon. I'm going to do this panel because I've never seen it before, Joe. No. And I thought before we went on, the colours went beautifully with the pink in the early bird. Backs of cushions. Um, I'm just looking at it myself here. So here's a beautiful panel. Yeah, Studio E. Oh, I'm alarmed. Joe told me not to be alarmed because he was coming in the room. He has to do that to all the ladies. Um, <laughs> he's hating me right now. Um, so these would be good, great as just cushion fronts. And maybe you're not into patchwork yourself. Um, you could just do your quilting if you've got Debbie's new book. You've moved it. If you've got Debbie's new book, which is under my graphics, all about quilting, and you just want to give quilting a go, you could make your sandwich with this on the front, and then you could do your quilting along the lines or stitch in the ditch kind of thing. You couldn't do stitch in the ditch because you're not blooming stitched it, have you? You could quilt along the lines and it would give that kind of illusion that you've done a lot of that patchwork there which sometimes we just need a project that finishes quicker and to have a go with our quilting because it's a whole skill in itself, isn't it, really? Um, or you, well, because I'm thinking just cushions here, but it could be a big tote bag. It could be, you could get your H640 and do a big quilted tote bag. Um, what else? I'm thinking also floor cushions. Apparently I'm really into floor cushions. Like, 
with kind of square sides. Does that make sense? So like a built up side with piping round it. Sometimes my ideas aren't the best. That's why the presenters don't repeat them. But <laughs> I'm there. I know that's a dangerous thing to see all my ideas that are normally ignored by the presenter. Also love the selvage. Look at the little birds. Can you get them, Joe? I've just given you a really difficult job. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. See, we're, we're, we're socially distancing and really down to just two people. Oh, look at them. Debbie will love them. She loves birds. But yeah. Oh, gosh, I saw myself then. This is, we have, um, I'm going to reveal all the, the secrets of the magic circle, secrets of the studio. We basically have a screen in front of us here, camera obviously, normally camera man, camera woman, but we've just got a camera. And then we have a TV, um, basically, and that is my preview. So I see what's going out to you. And it's, you know, when you're at the hairdressers and you look at your own face for too long? <laughs> And it's just not very nice. Well, that is what this next three hours of my life is going to be like. <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot to tell you. Can we do the, I think it's the floral panel, but I'll give you the code. J-R-U-U-47. This is exclusive to us at Sewing Street. Oh, and it's very big. I have not undone that. Oh, I'm holding it this way round, which is the wrong way round, but let's swap it. So you've got all your purples, your pinks, and then there's also, oh, I'm too short. I know, I'm, I'm now understanding the struggle that I'm always like, just move on, what are you doing? Um, so then you've got your greens across the bottom there. Oh, have you? <laughs> Oh, that's what that preview's for, not just looking at my own face. Look, there you go. And then there's the dark greens, which I really like because obviously there is on here. I'm going to go to the overhead. There's like a kind of... I oh, am. Yeah, sorry, I'm directing from the floor again. <laughs> sorry, that's really bad. Directors don't like it when you tell them where you've, they've got to go. And Joe already doesn't really like me this morning because I called his girlfriend by the wrong name and I've made fun of him quite a lot. So I'll have to, I have to be nicer. Um, the um, kind of floral print on here, I think is really nice with the greens as well because it's kind of like that kind of flower bed kind of the deep kind of foliage leaves onto these kind of really beautiful, I'm thinking like irises, we've got some purple irises in my front garden at the moment, they're not my work, they're beautiful, um, but like where I live is like, there's a big front garden that we all share, like it's a communal front garden, there's a lovely man called Brian, um, and he does all kind of the garden for us, which is absolutely amazing of him, and, you know, and some beautiful flowers out there, but these purples, and it's really kind of sprung into life at the moment. These purples and these greens kind of remind me of that. Um, so basically this will be great. Obviously the strips, you're thinking Bargello, trip around the world, just using them for smaller projects as well. You could easily cut these into squares and you'd have a lot there. So you could do a simple patchwork quilt of just your squares which I think it's very effective, especially when you've got this kind of ombre of colour, to even kind of simplify the patchwork you're doing, but play around with the actual element of colour and what you can do with that. Because, I don't know, obviously, Vixa says I have, I have a degree in fine art painting. She likes to make fun of me. But I think what I love about fabric is that I collect it to have colours and I see it as a big paint pot of colours. Like, they're my colour kind of colouring in set. So I end up just getting it all out. And I'm sure lots of you do at home. It's just getting it out and kind of sorting it out and seeing what colours go with what. That's the bit I find really enjoyable. And like, so having a panel like this is absolutely amazing because there's so much to play with there. And for like 12 99 also, that's an early bird. We're not meant to have an early bird. That's poor producing on my part there for not noticing that before. But um, 
yeah, I think for twelve ninety nine, a hundred percent, you've got so much to play for, play for, play with there. And even if you're doing simple squares, patcher, patching them together, or even just using them as a whole, is that the wrong price, Joe? It's nineteen ninety nine. Joe put in the wrong graphics. I'm so sorry. He's, he's on a one man mission to you know show show me up on my debut. Do you have, should we just, okay. Well, it's 19.99, sorry, Joe. It's on the web at 19.99. Yeah, should we see that? Because Joe's messed it all up. What is he like? This is my folding, my mum will be proud. <laughs> should we go to the website? Um, so this is where you go. Don't be alarmed that it's jewelry maker. Um, there's, you can sign up for our mail list, list and just above there, there is a live stream of what's going on. We're not gonna click it because enough of my voice anyway, you don't wanna hear me twice. And then all the products from today's show will be listed underneath. Um, <laughs> you need to refresh your page there, Joe. Um, but they will all be underneath. <laughs> I'm just telling him off. Um, they will all be underneath there. Um, so then you can check them out. So that is the panel there. I'm pointing, no one can see me. It is 90.99. Um, Joe is trying to ruin my television career here. That's fine. I'll get him back later. Um, I'll get your own back. Yeah, kids TV program with Gunge. Um, right, can I do, I'm gonna call them the pansies, but they're not, they're called sweet peas. Um, these were only launched last week. Have you not? Um, it was Vix on, I think, with them the other day. The dark purple and blue? Yes. So these are, oh yeah, these are incredibly limited now. See, I think these are pansies more than sweet peas. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Because again, I say that my nails are a mess because I like gardening, but I don't actually know what I'm doing. I just find it quite fun. Maybe not now it's raining, but I've kind of committed to the plants now, so I've got to stay with them throughout the year. Um, but I'll talk about the fabric more now rather than my life. All right, Joe. Um, so you've got your beautiful colors in here. So you can also mix this in with your, maybe your solids or other fabrics. So this is the uh, Rose and Hubble star from the early birds. And it's just good to start thinking about other, other ways to make these kind of pot and fa pot and? patterned fabrics go further. Or even if you were doing like a little tiny kind of like a, uh, a bag that's roped at the top. What's that? A drawstring bag, not roped at the top. Like a little drawstring bag I think would look beautiful in this. And then maybe if you're going super posh, lining it in this. Or, or just having like kind of the drawstring area and like the channel in this kind of thing, I think would look gorgeous. And then just like little, I wanna say gift bags, but they're not just gift bags. They are part of the present. Do you know what I mean? Or maybe if you make, make to sell or kind of craft fairs or for charity and things like that, those kind of things are really nice because then people can put in their own little present ideas as well. And the kind of the wrapping becomes part of the gift. It's not as wasteful, is it? and then they can use it. Thanks for agreeing, Jo. I'm sure everyone at home is like, what is she going on about? Um, can I do the pinks and reds, please? Again, sweet. Oh, was it? Why, what's this? Yes, it was. Sorry, I don't know the graphics, Jo. Um, so, should I show you? That one's violet. No? This one's violet. Okay, cool. This was fine. I do actually know the names of them, but it's when I'm upstairs, it's very different to standing down here. And I'm now understanding how I'm sometimes very mean to presenters. It's also very hot in here. Is it raining for everyone else today? Please get in contact on Facebook and let us know. I'm so sorry it's me today, not John but his car has unfortunately broken down. So you've got me, I'm Hannah, I'm normally producing. 
Also, if you check out in one single transaction today, um, that means that means you can have multiple items in your basket, but as long as they all go through at the same time, adding up to fifty pounds, then you can get ten pounds off if you put Hannah at checkout. Did I explain that clear enough? Okay, good. I was just checking with Joe. Oh, just to confirm, I'm going to blame Joe again. And I actually think this one was me, uh, but this one is the blue. I'm not going to unfold it. Oh, has it? Oh, I don't. Fantastic. Yeah, you're doing a really good job. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> I'm just saying thanks. Oh, we had a message from Claire. Is it? She's near us. She's Solly Holway. She met her, um, yeah, she met her, I think now husband, at Birmingham Airport. Oh, the facts I know about you guys at home. <laughs> morning, Claire. And, oh, thanks. Yes, it's a surprise is a nice way of putting it, isn't it? A lovely surprise. Yes, we all hope John gets his car sorted. <laughs> we all hope that. No one has to put up with this any longer. <laughs> this one is green, yes. Um, so this is quite an unusual colourway, but it's quite fresh. Fresh. I like the oranges behind. The contrast of the orange and the green is really nice, which also means you can use more colours with it. Um, we sell fabric by the half metre. I'm going to open this up, Joe, if that's OK. We sell fabric by the half metre, so that's what you'll get for your 5 99 uh, But if you are thinking of larger projects or if you are thinking of dressmaking, then we also sell that by, um, by the half metre, but in like multiple units. So if you wanted two metres, that would be four units. Comes off the bolt, there's all the words. I do know these words, but you get incredibly flustered standing up here, I'll tell you. No. It's different. Oh, so I was playing with the fan and the... Right. I was wafting with the fan. It was quite fun. The fan is hitting the fabric, but definitely not hitting me. No, it's fine. I think because I'm quite nervous, I'm quite hot. Um, oh, thank you. Joe's just assisted the fan for me. Um, can I do these kind of stripes ones? I don't know if they're called ticking. Um, pinstripe. Can I do the one on grey, please? It is very difficult to remember all the names when you're stood out here. This is something I have just learned. Oh, yeah, my name's Hannah. If you put my name in at checkout on orders over £50, you get £10 off. Right, this is more of a dressmaking fabric. It is a lighter weight. It can be used in quilting, it can be used in your homewares, but be aware it is a lighter weight. It's also extra wide, which is why it's hurting my arms. Um, which is not extra wide for dressmaking, but extra wide from what you would normally see, like the last fabrics we saw um, were 112. Um, and then this is an extra, I'm gonna say it's 140 centimeters wide, but I've not actually measured it. And right now, I don't know if where the ruler is, uh, which is ridiculous as there's so many tools here, but um, I think it's 140 wide. Um, it'll be great. I'm thinking little summer tops as well. You've got that downward stripe. Isn't that meant to be flattering? Um, so that's, yeah. Yeah, they are. <laughs> you can't go wrong with a classic kind of pinstripe either. I'm also thinking maybe, I've talked about a lot about pyjamas, maybe I'm tired, um, like a little pyjama pajama bottoms for someone. That's a really easy kind of, when I say easy, I mean I did some in lockdown and <laughs> they don't look brilliant. But I had fun making them. Um, and kind of an easy kind of way into dressmaking is doing pyjamas because there's less, oh thanks, it was really hurting my arms. Joe's letting me fold that up. It, it's quite wide. <laughs> um, quite an easy way into dressmaking of starting with things like pyjamas because they're loose fitting and you don't obviously you have to get your main measurements sorted of like how tall the person is and everything and their waist but you are doing an elasticated waist and they have room for mistakes let's say when you're first starting but you're still learning your skills um 
So then we've got one other colourway of this. I'm not going to undo it because it's the same width and that really hurt my arms. Um, I think this one, to be honest with you, this one's my favourite out of the two. Um, oh yeah, can I show that? So the two together actually would actually look really nice because if you look inside some of the flowers, there is that kind of grey tone being used. Like... I had to check my left and right then with my hand. <laughs> this is what happens. I also really need a nail brush. Um, so you've got the same kind of tones and colours, obviously, because they've got the same pattern. So I do think they work well together. Maybe you could do like a contrast trim on something. Or if you're using it on a bag, I think it would be nice. It would be a nice lightweight for a lining. It's quite fancy for a lining, but you are getting a lot. It's less than five pounds. Um, yeah, of course. Um, so I think it would be quite nice for a lining as that kind of pop of colour inside, maybe. Or if you're using on outer, maybe using a medium weight interfacing on it. Um, just want things to be a little bit more robust on bags. Well, I do anyway. I know what I'm like. I'm going to do the Aurifil next, if that's OK, Jo. I know that we have got... These have been put in very strangely. That was me yesterday. I know that this Aurifil Necessities pack, we've actually down to less than 10 now. This was our first kind of foray into Aurifil here at um, Sewing Street. Um, these are our, the larger spools. Um, and we had a lot of these to start with. We knew they were going to be popular. I presume um, that we will be reordering these in the future. They are, are, as the name says, the necessities. They are your kind of your white, well, that was black, white, black, cream and grey. Um, all from Aurifil here. Aurifil uh, works with 100% cotton. Uh, they're actually made in Italy. Uh, the way that they're made means that you get kind of less, um, what's the word? Kind of lint coming off. Please correct me if I'm using the wrong word. I just know that that kind of build, that doesn't build up in your machine. Yeah, Joe's just talking to me. Oh. Pinstripe on cream has sold out. Thanks for that, Jo. Um, we're just letting you know with the things when they're low in stock today, like these Aurifils are only, there's less than 10 of these available. Because if you do spend £50 and check out in one go, then um, you can bet £10 off if you put the code Hannah at checkout. I think that is a kind of sorry you've got to see me, Hannah, today on your screens. Yeah, it is definitely that, isn't it? Um, just, I'm just playing with them, like, they're little chess pieces. You get nothing for working with me, Joe. It's a pleasure every day, I'm sure. Um, basically, they're 100% cotton. They're made in Italy. They are such fine quality. I know that it is a personal preference whether you work with polyester or cotton. Some people work with both. Some people only work with cotton, and some people only work with polyester. I think a lot comes from maybe uh, when you were taught um, or, yeah, when you were learning what that person then worked with that maybe you were learning from or a book you were learning from, or it just comes from what you, your personal preference over the years. Uh, but if you do just work with cotton, and especially if you're a quilter, I know that you'll probably know, know the word, the word, the name, brand name Aurifil because of their high quality. Um, Grey is a great colour for EPP. Um, English paper piecing, um, although you are probably going to be using a whole menagerie of colours, you, um, it's great, this is kind of a very neutral colour to be doing your slip stitching with, uh, to get your, to get your pieces together, to patch it together. Um, that's kind of what I would advise anyway. I'm not, I'm not the biggest pro, but I have listened to quite a lot of Sewing Street and watched quite a lot of sewing things. And I do a little bit of English paper PC myself. We obviously know white and black, always useful. All of these spools have 1,300 meters on them. So they are gonna last you a long time. They are 50 weight, um, therefore they can go in your bobbin. Um, all of the kind of details on Aurifil as a company and as their threads in general and like what to expect from them um, are on their website and I would advise going there because it's quite nice to look at the different selections they have and we always listen to your feedback as well so if there's something if you do you have the Facebook page at all Joe? 
So if you do like message us on Facebook and say, like, I particularly like this weight of Orofil to work with my hand quilting, are you able to try and get it in? That is something that we do, like we're, we're a small team here, like things have become a little bit more difficult in current situations, but we are, yeah, but we are, we're a small team that listen and, you know, we want, you're, you're a massive part of us. So if you do have something you want to, you've seen a certain product, then do get in contact, message us, and we'll pass it on to the buying department. I'm not, yeah, to all talking messages. Oh, Pat. Hi, Pat. Oh, she hopes I'll be a regular addition. I think my boss will have a few other words to say about that <laughs> if, they, if they see me bumbling on. It's... Oh, hi, Amber. Oh. Oh, thanks, Amber. She said it was lovely to see me and me and Joe make a great team. A little bit questionable. <laughs> oh, Helen. Oh. Well, that is questionable. Helen's said good luck to me and have the spiders frighten everyone, everyone else away, which is actually now. Joe, uh, not Joe, John could have seen the show yesterday and the massive spider. And, you know, no, his car has broken down in all seriousness. And, you know, we all pull together here. So it's like I said to him, it's better than it breaking down on the motorway or something. Do you know what I mean? At least it happened before he left home and he's safely sound and he can make other arrangements for another day. Do you know what I mean? So that is kind of us here. Also, before I go off the Orofil, don't worry about the graphics, Joe. Um, if you can't find the end of it, the ends actually come off and there'll be the end in there. Just a little... Little tip. Yeah, it was, a, it was a sneaky Vicky tip. Right. How long have I got? Oh, we're half past the hour. I'm going to go to the big panel with the letters on, which isn't the technical name of it. Good luck, Joe, finding that from my description. Um, right. This panel I absolutely love. So it's exclusive to us. It's previously sold out multiple times i know that because i've brought it uh, i have two of these in my living room waiting to go along with my block of the week when i say waiting to go i will get there it's just it's just where you know there's a lot of sewing going on in my life and i'm here quite a lot so i've got two of these uh, why i love them i absolutely love the bright colors i absolutely love the font and font is something that i think is so effective but so difficult to get right you know, like my handwriting isn't the clearest. And I think these are just so useful. It's not just a one project wonder. That's a, that's a new phrase I'm going to coin there. One project wonder. It's not. Um, we had Debbie who made uh, like a little block for kids with kind of the toy stuffing. <laughs> no, no. Yes. There's a strange selection of letters on there, Debbie, for the start of the alphabet, um, we've noticed. Um, but what I got it for, quite a niche use, but the team will, will tell me to shut up about it. But I brought two. Um, I'm going to tell you because they won't be watching. But uh, my next door neighbours are moving out. They're also my friends. And they're, we're from, well, they're from Birmingham. And um, I live in Birmingham. And one of the words that are used a lot is bab. So what I'm going to do is applique these onto a cushion and make a bab cushion. Bab. And I thought it was really nice for their new home. Yeah, they might not like it, but I thought it was really cool. Like I've seen in lots of shops, like kind of regional phrases, like when I go and visit my friend up in Yorkshire and things, all these kind of expensive gift boutiques and things. Sorry, I was just looking down then at what's coming up. Have like lots of kind of quirky little gifts. Um, I also thought I'm all about the backs of quilts being as fun. So maybe like on the back of a quilt having maybe if you did like a big a big quilt themed with teapots, which is an interesting idea, I've decided. And you could have the word tea on the back of the quilt or a big cushion that says tea or coffee or the favourite place you've been. I actually did like the idea, but apparently I only use B and A um, of doing a big long cushion embroidering doing appliquing these on then doing embroidery and adding beads and things with Barcelona on which is one of my favorite places because I thought all the bright colors and things 
But anyway, um, I'm sure you've got a lot better ideas, but I just couldn't resist not showing you one of my favorite panels that I think um, that has ever been exclusive to us. But there we go. I'm trying to think not just kids. I think we see the alphabet and we think children's things. No, it's not. It, there is an and. The star, is it for swear words? We just don't know. <laughs> I don't, I can say, is it for swear words? I'm leaving it up to imagination. Um, right, so we've also got the bright panel. Is that okay, Joe? Thank you. These were launched on the same day as the previous panel. This also sold out. Um, and this is an amazing price point. Again, I don't really like my own handwriting. I am not talented enough at free motion embroidery to do lettering. Um, I'm not talented enough at, you know, you know, freehand cutting of letters. So here you've got a brilliant selection of, well, I was going to say solid colours, but they're actually got little patterns going on in them, which, I mean, you'd be there forever sorting out your stash to cut out the right letters, wouldn't you? So maybe you're making bunting or a wall organiser, I think is a good idea. Um, or storage tubs as well. One that says, am I allowed to say Lego? I've said Lego. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other toys now. What other toys are there? There's, you do a Lego storage box, Barbies. I've got to name three to make it okay. Oh, and an action man. So they all go in their nice where they're meant to go, not on the floor, because standing on Lego is the most painful thing in the world. But amazing price point again. You're not going to use it all at once. Not a one project wonder. I'm trying to coin that phrase. <laughs> Joe's just had to run back in. Cameraman and director Joe. It's fun. Do you feel like <laughs> this is some kind of weird challenge and like Anton Decker going to come in in a minute? I do. And be like, it's all a game. <laughs> yeah, when... I know, this is what I'm saying. It's like undercover, Anton Deck, come in and say, like, you've really embarrassed yourself. Uh, I didn't watch the last episodes, I'm afraid. Joe's now telling me all about different episodes of um, Anton, Deck's, <laughs> Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I got bored of Joe, so this is the next panel. Um, this is grey. Again, I think this is very homeware. I'm going to go storage boxes. Can I put it down on the desk, Joe, because it's incredibly wide? Is that...? Thank you. It's just, it really hurts my little arms. Oh, yep. Yeah. I'll look at the letters. Um, again, grey is that kind of, like, homeware colour, and then you can kind of accessorise it with other colours. Again, maybe storage tubs. A lot of nurseries and things are greys at the moment, aren't they? And then other colours on top of that. Or just even, you could make like laundry bags and stuff like that. Yeah, you could applique people's names onto their kind of shoe box of like, with their shoes in. That would be what the shoe box is for. Thank you for that brilliant input there from me. Um, and then, I just think there are so many uses for these and it is something that I think lettering can be a make or a break of a project of whether it looks professional or not. Yeah, bunting, Mr and Mrs, um, when we can go to weddings again, um, or like hen -dos. or even are you celebrating someone's birthday like social distancing? Are you going to put bunting up near their house as a surprise kind of thing? Pardon, Joe, what was your idea? Or in a video call. Yeah, my friend um, has had to cancel her wedding. And on the day of her wedding, all her family got dressed up in their finest, but only from the top up. So they had pyjamas on the bottom. And they did, they did like, um, like Sunday brunch when the wedding was meant to be on. So they all had breakfast over Skype because, you know, you big up for that day, or I imagine. No one's asked me. Um, you big up for that day and then... I know, just cry me a river there. Um, and then nothing, like it's a kind of, like she's still getting married, but in a year's time. So I think it's nice to celebrate and even making kind of these Skype calls a little bit exciting. 
Chime in. Oh, thanks, Bev. Bev said I'm doing a great job. Thank you for bearing with me, Bev. Like, you know, I know it's difficult. Um, I'm, I'm going to go to what I call the Fresh Prince of Bel Air <laughs> panel. Would you like the code, Joe? Um, it's O U U U 18. So that's three U's. Um, well, I'm just giving Joe the codes because it makes it easier for him to find. It's not always the best on his own. <laughs> oh, bless you, Joe. Just sneezed in my ear, which is a delight on Talkback. Um, basically, this is one, again, an exclusive panel for, for us. I'm trying to get it over the desk. It's massive. Um, this is the Bright panel. I call it the Fresh Prince of Bel Air panel uh, because I just think it's very kind of, you know, the Fresh Prince would wear all of these colours, wouldn't he, and patterns. Um, it's also very useful in terms of how much you're getting for your money because you're not having to buy all these fabrics separately. If you are just doing, not if you're just doing, if you're doing a design roll race with them, they are going to look brilliant together because we put them all together. And like, we've already done a bit of that work for you. But equally, if you're just gonna put it in your stash, and I think I would just have it for 19.99, just to work from every so often, to chuck a bit of color in, to maybe smaller projects. Um, I think it's brilliant. Or, yeah. Sorry, I just think, yeah, just having it there, value for money-wise for less than £20. And do remember today, if you are spending more than £50 on one single transaction, which means when you go to check out your basket, it must add up to 50 not must, but if you want to use the code, add up to £50 or more, put in the code HANNAH, H-A-N-N-A-H, and you can get £10 off, which is brilliant. I think that's a kind of a consolation prize for having to listen to me. Witter on, just such, so, so nice. It's kind of a taste of your own medicine because normally I'm the producer, so I'm wearing an earpiece. So normally I sit upstairs or well, at the moment or in the gallery at the side and everything I say, the presenter can hear. So I kind of give, I would like to say guidance, not, not instructions. I give guidance through the show of where we're going, what we're going to go to, and messages and, today, and things like that, and what's going on today. So I've just found out how difficult that is to, to be listening to me, as it were. This is the half strip. So I talked about value with the other one. This, I think, is even better value if you are using it for an EPP project. Um, you've got those still patterns in there. Um, also, even if you wanted to use it for binding for a cushion. Yeah, of course. I was just having to look at all the little patterns. Look at all those colours. No. Yeah, they, no, the other one's got the same patterns on. So if you, it's kind of what size project you have in mind or anything like that. I think, I think obviously the colours in there are so bright and then you know the quality of the printing. I think they are amazing. They're really fun. I think I'm all about fun things. I'm all about colour and fun. Um, I'm going to go to the Modern Rainbow Patchwork Quilts book, which was on yesterday, and I thought it had sold out. It, do you want the code, Joe? I'm going to give Joe the code. There was a lot going on this morning, to be fair. Um, we thought this had sold out, so that's why we haven't got it. It's M-U-P-U-71. There are less than 10 of these books. I could not not show you it because I absolutely love it. I think, actually, it was earlier on in lockdown. I was working from home. I'm sorry about that, Joe, as well, because that was quite annoying. You got a lot of text messages from me. Um, but... I was working from home and this actually came up on my Instagram. I follow like a lot of quilters and quilt companies and makers and all sorts of things like that. And this came up and I love this book. And I actually screenshotted it and was like, we have to buy it in. Yesterday I came in and it was here and I hadn't even told anyone. It was like they knew. So we actually have less than 10 of these books, but I just had to mention it. Can we just see a close up of the front of this book? Cause I have a hay fever, okay. <laughs> a lot of hay fever issues right now. Um, I think it's bright and colourful from the start. Um, I'm particularly interested in modern quilting. Um, but uh, that, I think that is a, 
I was going to say, I'm really interested in contemporary quilting. I am. That is what I love and I love to look at and research and things like that. But so much of it uses traditional blocks and things like that. I don't think, I don't think you can say you're just a contemporary quilter. Like, like in here, there are some patterns that would look great in your kind of classic colourways or classic red and white quilting. It, it all, all feeds into each other, doesn't it? Right. Yes, the left and the right. Joe's now saying left and right to me and I'm finding that very difficult. Also, I'd just like to mention here, there's some squiggly fabrics, very similar to the fabrics I've just shown you. And I know that that's a cotton and steel fabric which are a company we don't have here, but I think we should have if I mention it enough times. Um, so there's obviously an introduction. We like that. How It's nice to learn how other people got into quilting and what brought them to putting a book together. Um, I like that it talks about using colour. I'm going to have to be a bit faster on this book because we have got less than 10. But um, it talks about using colour. It can be such a powerful tool in a quilt and in kind of any artwork you're making. And I do think a quilt is an artwork, a cushion is an artwork, you've made it. Um, that's lovely. So it's talks to you about tools you need, all the extra things you need to know. That's a Riley Blake fabric in there. We had Riley Blake in the early bird. Um, some of your main skills there. Um, some of these things we don't always get to on the show, which I think is really useful. And you might feel not Silly asking, but you might not want to ask. Uh, binding we do cover sometimes. Actually, yesterday we had a video with a new guest and she did, was it Kerry yesterday? Or is it Kerry that I saw after the show? Oh, it was Kerry I saw after the show. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh well, yeah. I just saw her from a distance. We just have to fill VTs. Catherine yesterday, sorry, Catherine, did... Um, did uh, Annie Quilting Potholder's book and she did a really good demo on actually binding. Um, so I like that the book covers these kind of things, even making them vote cu back cushion, which is something I always cut the wrong sizes for. Um, and then it doesn't actually shut. Oh, it's got 10 minutes left. Um, right, I do have to be faster on this book because we do not have enough stock for me to witter as much as I want. Lots of tips. Oh, hello Maureen, you've sent in a lovely message. Oh, thanks, Maureen. She says, it's been a very entertaining presentation. Oh, she says I underestimate myself. Oh, thanks. I think I'm just, like, furiously talking due to being very nervous. Oh, thanks. Oh, thanks. Oh, no, that means a lot because I, you don't know how scared I was. Like, I got a text before I went to sleep last night and I was like, oh, I wish I'd been asleep. Like, and then my nightmares were me coming on here, you know, the kind of classic nightmare where you, <laughs> I'm not going to go into it, but it's very embarrassing. <laughs> um, so they break them down in here. Also, these, this is a colouring page, which if you do have access to a photocopier, um, means that you can photocopy that. You could colour straight in, but, you know, it's a book. I feel naughty if you colour straight into the book. Um, you photocopy it out. I think I've got makeup on it. I have to be mine now. Um, you can then have a couple of these and you can play away. Play away? Don't play away. Play around with your, <laughs> your colourways. Oh, no. Last 10 minutes and I'm going to get in trouble for what I'm saying. Um, you can play around with your colourways before you cut your fabric. So they've got an example here of the one that they're showing you. But there's also that opportunity to make more quilts, but exploring with the colourways you already have or things you prefer. I think that's a really great addition. I'm going to flick through a little bit faster because we don't have loads of these and I'm just indulging. Absolutely love that quilt. I just think, yeah, I just think they're beautiful and I think they can be used in lots of different ways. That's one you could use your traditional fabrics with, with maybe a cream background maybe a three sisters range and it wouldn't look out of place um this is my absolutely favorite quilt and i really want it but i interestingly would like not interestingly i'm saying it's as if i'm really interesting um i love bright colors but for some reason i look at this and i think that's absolutely gorgeous but we often do like neutral bundles like coffee colors and i'd like to do kind of like a very neutral palette 
I don't know. I think I've been seeing a lot of quilts in those kind of very earthy colours. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm getting a bit more grown up. Or maybe I'm a bit more grown up. I'm also, it's also very hot in here, Joe. just so you know. I know you can't do anything, but I just like you to know. So I think I'm appearing like very hot. <laughs> and I like the smaller cushions as well. Cushions, projects like cushions. Um, and then you're also doing like based on your kind of ta turn dash block as well. You're learning different skills. Thank you so much. Joe's just opened the door. I mean, I think it's got very, because it started raining here. I don't know what the weather's like everywhere else, but I think the rain has just made it really like, I always talk about the weather, <laughs> but you know, like very close. Is that the right word? You know, when you go on holiday and, you, and it's like that storm day, you wake up, and, but there's, no, there's been no buffet breakfast at this holiday. <laughs> That's the main highlight. Um, I'm going to have to go off this book because we do have very few of these in stock. Absolutely love it. Only came in yesterday and I'm already saying very few in stock. Um, I'm let, giving you that warning, but I'm also letting you know that if you have over £50 in your bar basket when you go to check out, do use the code HANNAH and you get £10 off. So that's one single transaction. So I'd keep an eye on it, but it is worth bearing in mind. It's a bit difficult with these ones that are low in stock because I don't want you to miss out. What else is low in stock? <gasps> Pinstripe on grey. Knew you'd love it. Um, this is also low in stock. I'm not going to unfold it because it's a dressmaking width and that hurt my arms. It's a slightly lighter poplin weight. Um, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Love a stripe. Love all the colours. Go with lots there. Um, right. What else should I do? I know. Oh, can I do this one? Fantastic. J-C-U-U-61. It's the code for Joe. Uh, this is again another one of our exclusive panels, completely different to everything else in this hour, I think. I think we've gone with that kind of bright, bright, bright look, which I think suits me quite well. Um, I know this is always really popular uh, because, again, with these, value. Like, I've just knocked all of the Aurifil over, brilliant. Um, I think value you are getting lots of different selections of fabric, which you would have to collect in a stash over years. So for paying less than 20 pounds, I had to check the price then, you might have seen me, I'll pop my face up there, for less than 20 pounds, because I couldn't believe that this one's got more kind of selection in. Um, I'm gonna fold it up because I, oh, Oh, my boss has messaged in. This could be the end, guys. <laughs> oh, she said, Hannah's doing fantastic. That's very nice, Ellie, but you didn't get up and do it, did you? But thank you. <laughs> no, that was such a nice thing. That was such a nice thing. I'm not bitter. I like talking to you guys. I just, it's, it's just more difficult. I've now got in a kerfuffle with the fabric. Don't forget. If you spend fifty pounds and put the code Hannah in at check, oh look, there's me! Oh, I love. I've got my own slide. Um, yeah, if you put the code Hannah in at checkout, that also applies if you're calling the customer service team. Just tell them the word Hannah. Which I, I hope they've all been briefed because otherwise they'll be like, what? They will have been briefed. They will know what's going on. Don't worry. And also that phone line below are really helpful. Um, it's completely free. They're actually based down the road in Redditch and like they will always get in contact with us. Why are you laughing at me, Joe? Oh, would she? Oh, we'll test that one, won't we, Hayley? Hayley said, unfortunately, she has Joseph today, so she can't. And otherwise, she definitely would have come in. I understand, Hayley, it's fine. I'm quite enjoying myself, really. I just. It's just very hot in this room. That's all I can say. I feel like I'm playing some kind of weird game of shop with Jo. Um, can I go to the Susan Briscoe book, which has also got less than 10 in stock? Yes, I can also give you the code, because this is one I sprung on you this morning. Um, N, no, R-N-P-U-0-8. Um, I picked out to do this book this morning. Shouldn't really be doing it with less than 10 in stock. 
it's something that has previously sold out and we have got back in. I'm learning my left and right now as well for Joe. A lot of you will have already met Susan, maybe at shows or, or here at Sewing Street. She's done some videos for us and she's come into the studio previously. Um, she is such a great wealth of knowledge on, particularly we've spoken to her about like Japanese quilting and Sashko and Boro and lots of those kind of Japanese techniques. Um, this is kind of a mixture of all different quilting techniques, but with that same kind of Oh, I'll just run over a tiny bit. Um, Joe's just asking me as producer how long I want this show to go on. Um, I'm just going to do this book because I absolutely love it. Um, Susan is all about, you know, she always knows, not all about, that's me making a presumption there. She knows a lot about the history of things and she's very thorough and, you know, leaves you with her books, like tells you enough to get you interested to want to go find out more and it answers questions but it kind of opens up a whole different area of maybe quilting or patchwork or Japanese techniques to make to make you want to explore that further and start a whole new avenue of ideas and like a passion like new passion ideas really some of that made sense I think I got what I meant um this book is great um, there is so much in here. I mean, it's so thorough. Um, crazy patchwork, absolutely love. We all have fabric that's left over from projects that we don't want to throw away, whether it's because it's wasteful or because we just love it and couldn't bear throwing it away. So it's great to have ideas to use them. Oh, shadow applique, love that. Um, Buyer strips. This is something I really want us to do if Hayley is watching. It's like using um, a uh, bias and then you applique it on into kind of Celtic knot designs. Um, yeah, absolutely love it. Maybe we can talk to Susan. Please, Susan. Um, Hawaiian applique, which is also a very interesting kind of, I think it was quite traditional to start with. I don't know that much about it, so forgive me. Um, there is just so much in here. There's less than 10 of these books and I'm running over. I just had to show it because I love Susan's books. I think, I think they're very, they're just so informative and you can tell she does everything with passion, which I'm sure a lot of our books do, but that's what we get books for. But elsewhere you might go and get books and it might not be an expert that's put them together or someone that's really passionate and you know Susan's passion because you've met her. But yeah, I had to end with that. Um, I think we're going to go to go break now, aren't we, Jo? Um, we've got dressmaking in the next hour. We've actually, you'll see me come on and introduce some new products, um, like the fabrics. And then we've got Jenny McCurry, McKeer I always struggle with her name, I'm sorry, Jenny, because I just call her Jenny. Um, we've got Jenny, um, and she's filmed a lovely VT on for us of making these kind of lightweight summer trousers which I think are absolutely gorgeous, brand new fabrics. I'll see you after the break. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you.
Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw from Sewing Street and these are my five top tips for successful sewing. So number one, always use a good quality thread. A good quality thread will keep your seam stronger and also help to prevent lint building up inside your sewing machine. Tip number two, if your project isn't going quite according to plan, put it down, walk away from it, come back again the next day and you'll probably find that things don't seem half as bad as they did. My tip number three, never throw away your sewing machine manual, always keep it to hand because you're going to find hints and tips, techniques and troubleshooting in that manual. You'll miss it if you lose it. My tip number four is to read your pattern instructions before you even cut out your fabric. Different manufacturers of patterns will give you different instructions, different ways of constructing your garments and different seam allowances. So to have a successful garment, you need to follow the instructions precisely. And then tip number five is don't give up. Every professional sewer sewed their first seam. Every professional quilter quilted their first quilt. Every professional quilter sewed their first line of wonky stitches and had to get out the quick and pick. That's no different to you. So I hope you find these useful. If you want more hints and tips, then why not go to Sewing Street on Channel 74 on Freeview, on Sky 670, and of course we have a YouTube channel where you can catch up on previous demonstrations. We'll see you soon. just leaning on the table talking to Joe about does he have photographs of the beautiful Jenny showing us these trousers that she's made for us and she's yes please she's put together a lovely VT as well but that's her modeling them in brand new fabric brand new pattern um, we're going to show you or she's going to show you how to make those in just a second I think they're great for summer they've kind of got that cuffed leg there so I feel like you know they're great for summer. They're great for any time you want to wear them, believe me. <laughs> um, they are from this book, Work to Weekend Wardrobe, which I think is a gorgeous book. I think it follows you through kind of different um, ideas of what to wear when. I've put a couple of notes. So the first one I put in, I was going to just have a quick flip through. I'm sure Jenny explains a lot more about how to use the book. But some of the key things I liked here... Of course, apparently I like to do the book on the left so Joe can't see it. Um, there is obviously your introduction, which I think, I think because maybe because I'm a very novice dressmaker, I find these introductions so valuable. Um, and this is one with a lot of information in. There is your keywords. Um, there is about distorting the grain line and methods of cutting. Um, there is all different ways of checking your fabric, needles, threads. And I think sometimes these can seem kind of, in a book, not necessary. Um, I think this one is very well done in terms of what the information it's given you. And it's giving you terminology you might hear and not know about. 
it's giving you kind of recaps on skills that you might not do all the time. And um, there's also lots all about different kind of tapes that you're going to use. Like if you're using a stretch fabric, you're going to be using kind of a tape in your shoulders so they don't stretch. All about that in the shaper section. Um, I just loved that intro and that might just be because I'm at the beginning of my dressmaking journey. But I also think maybe it's good for the refresh. You're not always using all of these things all the time. I just, I particularly like that kind of uh, way it was broken down. I didn't think it was, sometimes they feel a little bit like a waste of a book. That's a bit harsh, but do you know what I mean? Like you want the most from what you're buying. Um, just before we show the trousers we're making today, absolutely love this dress. Um, I thought it just suited a lot of different body shapes and it was a really good length. I'm sure they also talk about hacking into a pattern, which is kind of changing things for your body shape. But personally, I really like this because it looked really flattering. Um, it had a good length of sleeve and that's something that I'm quite self-conscious about, um, which is why I would want to do dressmaking. Um, because like if you think we are all the different shapes and sizes and the shop only produces a certain variant of those. So I think it's really great to have those dressmaking skills and you know it's I'm not going to say I'm amazing at it I'm not I've done the odd little project but it's something that I'm very interested in and I think this book does you know it's got this is obviously this is a this is beyond my skill level here these are variants on like a trench coat but it's something to work towards um but anyway just thought I'd divulge a little bit and things that I liked in this kind of new brand new book to us here um, but the trousers that we will hear Jenny talking about are just here. All seasons trousers, um, it, a list of kind of fabric, suggested fabric requirements, um, the notions you're going to need, which is all your bits and bobs, um, drafting your pattern. Um, you do get in here all your full size patterns. Um, which are all in colour as well, which I do think is important in terms of tracing them off. They're also between the different sides. I don't think you can see, but they've got very clear different um, dashes for the different size variations. Um, and there's also in the book, it's explaining you using a pattern, which is something that I think when you just buy a packet pattern sometimes, it's quite overwhelming. It looks like it's all in Morse code or something. Um, but anyway, there's all about the trousers in there. There's some lovely tips in there as well. And you've got your full size pattern. Um, so brand new book today. Remember, if you spend over £50 in one transaction, you can get £10 off. So, so I tell you. Oh, brilliant. Yes, I, I just, just reading the back of the book. I was intrigued. Um, I'm just going to also introduce some brand new fabrics today. They're sold by the half metre. These are the ones that the trousers Jenny was wearing and made out of. Again. Oh, sorry, that was a very complex name. I'm just going to call it green polka dot, but it's tea party polka fabric fern green. I think this is a lovely colour. Um, it's, um, do you have the makeup of this fabric at all, Joe? Thank you. Sorry, that's really annoying. That's something I would normally be doing is just letting you know. It is uh, 150 wide or 140 wide, I will double check. Um, it's wider than your quilting weight. It is that nice lightweight for summer and it's kind of got, I like to describe things because you're not here with it. It's kind of, um, I want to know the composition. 145 centimetres wide, I was in the middle. Um, do you have the composition there? Ah, bubble crepe. So I was going to say it's a crepe. Um, that's the texture of it. It's 100% polyester bubble crepe. I don't know if you can get in nice and tight, Joe. Sorry. Is that really annoying for me? Um, but it's kind of got... It's not... Yeah. It's quite, it's quite textural. Um, so that's... No. That's the one that um, Jenny is using. Um, and then can we do, these are, they, these are all different from each other in terms of weights. Um, and I think that, I'm not a dressmaker, but again, I think this one will be more difficult to work with than the others because it is a lighter weight. Um, can we do these squares? It will be Bertie. Because the other one's got pyramids on, Joe. 
Uh, again, can I have the composition of this? I think it's polyester. Um, I love all the colours in this and it actually looks like they're all woven. I think maybe you could just wear this with a plain black top and especially as the trousers, the trousers are all seasons, I think maybe plain black top in the office if you're going back to work or you've still got something like they're smart but fun. 100% polyester. Do you have the width? This is 140 wide. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. If you love colour, if you love mixing with maybe just a plain black top. I don't know why it's called Bertie either. I have to blame Kat. She probably named it something strange. <laughs> um, do remember half metres if you want, say, two metres. That is four units. So put four in when you check out or tell the team. Um, the last brand new fabric, completely different to the others, and this happens to be my absolute favourite. It is really soft. Um, can you tell me the composition of this? Sorry. Um, I love the colours in this and the feel. That is the thing for me. The feel of this is gorgeous. There you go, there's the brush, it's brushed. That's why it feels so lovely on the skin. Um, it's 100% viscose brushed twill. Um, viscose is, if I'm quite correct, it's a, it's a natural, it's made of natural fibers. Um, so I'm gonna be honest with you, this will probably be the least sweaty option. Um, it's very hot out there. I know, I have to be honest. I know, it's, I'm very hot. Um, the brush is really nice on the skin. I think, for me, this is my favourite, if that... Oh, don't let that sway you. I wouldn't, no one else will. Um, nice little colours in there. Again, a little, all you need is a little black top with that, don't you? Whether you're wearing it around the house or you could dress it up. I've spoken far too long about that. We've got Jenny coming up with her demo for the trousers. And then after the demo, I'll recap the fabrics. I can answer any questions that I can, um, I'll put myself out there, and um, any of the kind of haberdashery elements and notions that also go with your trousers. So we're gonna hear from Jenny now. There we go. Hello, it's Jenny McCreary here, and it's really, really nice to be back on your screens sewing with you. I've missed you, I so have, I really have missed you all. I've been doing a ton of sewing uh, recently, which has been great, my wardrobe is filling up with lots of nice summery outfits that I've been making. I'm really excited for the sunshine, which is out in Glasgow today, and I'm in here sewing with you. So that is dedication, but I'm gonna reward myself with a good seat in the sun after this. I hope it's sunny where you are as well. And I hope you're safe and well, and I hope you've been sewing lots too. I've got a fab project for you today. It is, it's good for, you can wear it to work, and you could also, it's quite a loungy, it's like in between loungewear and stuff you could get away with wearing to work depending on the fabrics that you pick. Um, it's from this fab book, which is the Work to Weekend Wardrobe um, Sew Your Own Capsule Collection. It's got lots of fab projects in it, it literally has something for every occasion, so something for work, something for a night out something for both, like that transition type outfit that sometimes you want if it's say a Friday night and you're working during the day <clears throat> and then going straight out afterwards. Um, yeah, really, really nice book. I'll show you some of the projects in here. So there's jumpsuits, there are, I'll go to the back, there's dresses. There's the patterns falling out. There's a wee bag there as well. Lots of nice summery stuff. It's a really nice wee book. I love uh, a sewing book anyway. It's a nice wee coffee table book. And as you can see, the patterns fell out because I've not put them back in. So it's got all the patterns included as well that you can trace. You don't have to print them out. Um, what we're going to be making today is the All Seasons Trousers, which I will show you. Um, it is part of the jumpsuit pattern. So it can be made into a jumpsuit or it can be made into trousers, which is cool. Big fan of a jumpsuit at the moment, actually. I've made a, made a couple. So here are the trousers that we're making. This wee one here. So you can you can kind of see what I mean when I'm saying that it's you could get away with being loungy in them, 
but they're also, you could definitely wear them to work, just totally depends on the fabric that you use. They've got a lovely wee, um, they've got a wee drawstring, you cannot really see that, but there's a wee drawstring there. They've got pockets, and they've got the elasticated bottom, which I would say is optional, so if you didn't want that, you can get away with not putting that in. And it's got a nice elasticated waist as well, um, so really very cute pattern. Um, I will go through the fabrics that we've got and then we'll just get started, shall we? Right, so we've got a mixture of fabrics here. The The pattern actually has an option for you to do a stripe down the side, um, which I haven't done, but that's an option and it's super, super easy. The instructions are really easy to follow, so if you did want to do the stripe, you absolutely can. I haven't done it. Um, Fabric-wise, this is the first one. Now I've already, I've cut this because this is the sample that I'm making. So this is a viscose. It's 100% viscose. It's a brushed, it's called a brushed twill. It's got a little bit of a texture. You know how twill has like, almost like a diagonal, it looks like a diagonal weave. Really, really nice. I can show you close ups of these fabrics later on as well. Um, so the nice thing about, sometimes buying fabrics online can be a little bit, you don't really know what you're getting. Um, whereas I can tell you that this is really nice and drapey and obviously viscose is natural fibre so it's nice if it's hot weather. Um, but you need to be a bit more covered up so if we are going to work in summer for example, it's really nice and drapey but it's not too slippery so it's actually a really nice fabric if you're, if you're making the transition into... Um, you know, I'm maybe a bit of a beginner um, and I've, I've only ever used fabrics that absolutely behave themselves. This is like, a, I would say this is like a medium uh, difficulty fabric because it's got a bit of, it's got a bit of drape, it's got a tiny bit of stretch, but it's not stretch fabric and it's not really that difficult to work with. It's been, it irons well as well, so that's, that's nice. This is 7 99 for a half metre, which is a fab price for a viscose actually, really, really nice. So that's the first fabric to show you. Second fabric, now I had a hand in picking some of these fabrics so that's why they're quite colourful because as you can tell, quite a colourful person. So this one, this one is called Bertie. It is a polyester crepe. Let me just, I've got that written down. Yes, a double crepe. So again, for this, this project, I wanted really nice drapey fabrics. Um, you don't want anything that's going to be too stiff when you're making like a pair of trousers like this they want to be nice and flowy and comfy and you can see this is also a really nice drapey fabric now i love this print do you know what this reminded me of it reminded me of you know the little chanel jackets that you get that are like that tweed like a it's quite a chunky tweed and you can really see the weave in them that's what this this is obviously a printed fabric but that's kind of what this reminded me of and i thought it was quite classy so this is also 7.99 per half meter so again a really nice price i'm a big fan of crepe just now i've been making quite a lot of things out of crepe um and trousers are are perfect for this crepe then i've got one more fabric for you which is 100 percent polyester and it is also a crepe it's a bubble crepe so it's got a little bit more drape and it's got a bit of bounce in it, this fabric. I've got a green polka dot this time. Who doesn't love a polka dot? The green is it's kind of sagey green and I absolutely love it. It's really nice and lightweight and the drape's lovely. So again, you can see one of the benefits um, of buying in person or buying from Sewing Street is you can actually see the drape and you can get a bit of a feel for the fabric which you don't really get online. So it's got a tiny bit of give in it as well, extra comfort, fab, fab fabric. So let's get sewing shall we? So here is the finished article. You can see how these are actually like comfy but dressy. Um, and you can also see a little bit of the texture of this fabric on this camera a little bit better. So this has got a kind of, I mean it is quite a pronounced crepe, this one. Really, really nice. It feels nice too. Nice and drapey. So the patterns are at the back of the book. There is a nice little kind of folder at the back here. That you can keep them in which will stop them falling out when you're showing people the book so 
what I did, I know that some people can find these patterns quite overwhelming because there's quite a lot of lines and patterns on top of each other. Um, but I have actually used the the heat erasable markers um, to just trace my size, one of these. Um, and it just makes it so much easier to actually see the pattern through your tracing paper. Um, so that's what I would do. Um, find your size, trace around it. Um, it just makes everything so much easier. Um, just remember to put all of your, your notches and things on there as well. Um, this can be ironed later so that the these marks disappear. Um, so it's super handy if you're wanting to, to make multiple sizes out of this, you know. Um, yeah, that's that's my advice for, for these patterns because they can be quite overwhelming otherwise. Once you've overlapped all your pieces, you want to grab your front trouser piece, which is this piece here, which is a very odd shape because we've got a bit missing here for the pocket, but we're just about to fix that and your pocket piece, which is this wee bit here. Now this goes right sides together, down on top there, matching the curved edge we've got here. The seam allowance on this pattern is one centimetre, so I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch this with a one centimetre seam allowance, so it's all the way along there, and then I'm gonna give it a wee press. So I've pinned this, and I'm just gonna give it a wee stitch, with my one centimetre snaps. And obviously remember to do a wee reverse at the start and at the end. I've really been enjoying getting loads of sewing done, I won't lie. Um, not been in the, I've not been travelling to work, I've just been working from home, which means like my commuting time I've basically been using to sew because it's like extra time, isn't it? Working from home a lot does mean that you eat a lot of chocolate though. I've been eating, I've been drinking a power of tea more than normal. I'm basically fueled by caffeine now. And the chocolate consumption is through the roof. I wonder if you guys are the same. Let me know if you're the, if you're also consuming your body weight in chocolate every day because I want to know that it's not just me. Otherwise, I've got I've got a big chocolate problem. Right. So this is stitched on now, and I'm going to just basically the pattern again. The pattern doesn't tell you to do this, but I know from experience I didn't do it on the green pair. Um. And that's how I know that this is something that you're going to want to do. And it's under stitch. Now, under stitching is when you stitch through the the piece that's not going to be seen on the outside. So either a lining or a facing or a pocket piece and the whole seam allowance. So this bit here is my trouser. This bit here is my pocket. So I'm going to be stitching next to this line of stitching that I've just done. But over here a wee bit and I'm just going to stitch down there. And that is called under stitching, and you, it's a stitch that you do not you don't see on the outside. It's completely, um, it'll be completely concealed on the inside of the pocket. But what it does is it holds the seam allowance back and stops the pocket going all a little bit, kind of, bumfly if that is the right term to use. I don't know. I'm going to do that just now. So here we go. So this bit's my pocket. This bit's my trousers. Here is my seam allowance and I'm going to stitch quite close to the stitching already there. And this is just going to make our pocket pieces much neater. And there, there are a focal point of the of the pattern, so I'd say you want to get these right. And then we want to give 
with this press. So that's what your under stitching looks like. And we're going to fold this back on itself like that. And give that a press. We've done this bit, giving it a nice wee press, understitched, that's all sitting nice and happy and flat now. To form the pocket, this piece gets folded flat in half. So maybe I should turn this this way so you can see what I'm doing here. So this is my trouser, my front trouser piece. This is my pocket that's been stitched on here. And then we want to just fold this in half like this. So I'm, I'm looking at this line, that's the line I'm wanting to half. Because obviously this piece doesn't half perfectly because we've got this big missing bit here. But fold it in half like that. And then at this point here where it's folded, I want to pop a pin in there. So we've got about, about three centimetres folded here. We'll secure that through all the layers. So that's gone right through to the front of my trousers. And then I'm just going to pin this here and stitch this. So this bit gets pinned and stitched not to the trouser. This is just the pocket lining to the pocket lining here. So we've stitched this bit here, I've got a pin in here and I'm now going to put a pin in at this side bit here because there's a wee space that we don't want. So I'm just going to pop a pin in there and I'm going to do two wee basting stitches here and here just to hold this pocket in place. The, so a basting stitch is just a temporary stitch that will not be seen on the outside and that you can take out. So you want to increase your stitch length to maybe a four or a five so that it's nice and wide and also I would advise you to stay within the seam allowance so I'm probably going to try and sew a little five millimetres in from the edge so that I don't actually have to remove this stitch it can just stay in there no one will ever know. Um, this, this part and this part will be getting stitched over again so it will be getting secured properly um, later on. So now we have a pocket. So that's what it should look like um, on the outside. And that's what it looks like on the inside. Next up, you want to grab your back pieces. So do the same on your other um, front with the, exactly the same with the other pocket. Then with your back pieces, there is a dart. So I've stitched in my wee dart at the back here. And we are going to place your front piece on top of your back piece. And we want to match up the inside leg seams, stitch them down, and the outside seams and stitch them all the way down as well. I'm just going to sew these seams that I'm pinned. Make sure that you don't stitch, obviously, 
Well, not obviously actually because trousers are quite tricky. Don't stitch this curvy bit at all. That gets left. It's only this seam and the outside seam, the two straight ones we're sewing just now. I'd say this is quite a nice pattern for your first like your first pair of trousers, because I know trousers can kind of scare people sometimes. But this is a really nice pattern, so. And there's other things in the book as well. It's always good when you buy a book and you've got lots of patterns rather than just one. You know, I just realised I didn't really do a very good job of straightening the back of my hair today. I didn't think I would be side on. Forgive me if there's lots of like curly bits sticking out. I've not really been doing my hair to be honest at all. I've turned into a total slob recently. I only do my hair if um, I'm doing a... We've been doing online classes at So Confident so I basically do my hair and my makeup. If I've got a class and that's it. I'm sure we're all the same, right? Just now. All my secrets are coming out. Thought I would maybe keep up appearances and pretend I always have makeup on and have, you know, straight hair, etc. But it's not true, I can't lie to you. I reckon these could be cut into a cute wee pair of shorts as well actually. That might be nice. You just shorten them. I definitely do a twelve first, do a mock up to make sure that that actually works. I don't want to be getting any messages from anyone saying I cut them into shorts and they're horrible. In good fabric. Definitely do a mock up. But if you do make, if you do do any variations, I would love to see them. Three quarter length would work as well, that would be nice. Do you know what these trousers are good for actually? You know you want a comfy pair of trousers to like track like if you're going on holiday and you get on the plane and you want to be comfy but you don't want to look like you're wearing your pyjamas. This is the pattern for that I'd say. And a wee reverse when you get to the bottom. Obviously you can't see what I'm doing really but it is just straight stitching. Not a huge deal. Okay one side done I'm going to do the other side. I can um, hear my dog at the door. I can actually hear her breathing through the door. She's a bit of a heavy breather. She should be out in the garden, but it's too hot for her, I think. And she's just absolutely glued to me because I've been working from home all the time. She just follows me about everywhere. So when I shut the door, she was a bit like, um, oh, let me in. If she barks, I do apologise in advance. I would love to know if anyone's ever made trousers before. Get in touch with us and let us know. Did they work out? Do you love them? And are they as difficult as you thought they were going to be? Because I'm sure the answer to that is no. Do 
you can definitely get away with doing this these in jersey as well i would say they're not dissimilar to the the kind of high-waisted doggy bottom type things everyone's been wearing <laughs> The pattern doesn't say that you can, um, it doesn't suggest stretch fabric, but I think if it was quite a stable stretch, like a jersey, then it would be fine. Like a, I think quite a heavyweight jersey that you would make like a jumper out of or something. I think that would be quite nice. Okay, we've got a trouser leg, like, guys. There we go. That's the dog barking, do apologise. Okay, she's not going to leave me alone until she makes an appearance, so I'll let you see the dog. Come here, Sayla. Come on, yeah. <laughs> she weighs a ton. She's so heavy. <laughs> hey, Sayla, who's that? This is our wee rescue dog. I've, ta I've talked about her before. <laughs> she doesn't like sewing. Right, okay. Now stop barking. Be good. Okay. <laughs> okay. So you're, you've got two trouser legs now, so they're exactly the same to the other pieces so you've got a right and a left leg and they should be completely separate at this point turn one of them right side out and have one of them inside out like I have here and we're going to put one inside the other um so I'm just going to put this one so the one that's right side out inside the inside out one right so put this on my arm and then I'm just going to put this over like that now the seams that we're actually matching up here are the underneath, so the crotch seams. Putting one inside the other allows you to have your fabric right sides together. And to stitch over crotch seam there, so that's what they should look like now. And we're going to be stitching from here to here, so all the way under in a semicircle. So I'm just going to pin that. Match your your seam allowance bits here and here. And I would also open your seam allowance here. that. We are, much like many people just now, doing quite a lot of things in the garden. So in our last flat that we used to live in, um, Steve put some shelves up and he did a terrible job of it. So I just thought he was rotten at DIY and have been telling people this, including him, for some time. Anyway, now he's putting decking down and I take it all back. He's actually done a really good job. But he was saying to me there, he's like, but when are you finish filming so I can get the saw out? Because the saw is so loud and it just disturbs the piece. But he's champing at the bit to get to get going again. So I take everything back that I ever said, probably on air at some point, about Steve and him being rotten at DIY. I take it all back. Although the decking isn't finished yet, so maybe I should maybe I should just keep quiet. And then make my final decision on his DIY skills once the decking's finished, perhaps. I'm sure it'll be fine. I've got faith in him now. So this seam needs stitched twice just to reinforce it because it is a seam that can go if you do the splits or climb over a fence or I don't know what you would be doing but it does happen so you want to stitch around this twice. Once one centimetre and then I'm going to do once a little bit further in. Um, so I'll do maybe one at one centimetre and one at maybe eight millimetres in. I'm just going to whiz around that.
was going to put my little close up camera on again, but it is just straight stitching, there's nothing fancy going on here. Okay, stitched once. I'm going to quickly go over that again just to reinforce it. These are really quite a satisfying make, they're quite quick, which is nice. Okay, so that's that stitch twice, and this is probably the point you might want to turn them out and just try them on, see what they look like. I try my patterns on at every available point because I get really excited when I'm dressmaking for myself. So if we turn these out, these are looking good. So we've always got trousers, bear in mind these come in and they are high waisted. So that's why the crotch is like away down here. I put these to one side and we are going to do the tie next. So there's a little tie in the front um, that goes through two eyelets, which I'll show you. Here's the waistband. So I've already done the waistband just to save time. Now all I've done in the waistband is I've stitched the two side seams together. One side seam I've left a gap in. So I've stitched here and then I've started stitching here again and that is where we'll thread our elastic through. So you want to leave yourself a wee gap. And I've also found the centre, so you've got a front facing, a front uh, waistband, sorry, and a back waistband. The front waistband is smaller. So you want to put two wee eyelets in the centre. I just marked where the centre was. And I probably, I think my eyelets are about two centimetres apart. You can actually put them anywhere you like, but that seems to work. I did that on the on the green pair, which are here. So this is the bit that we're doing here, these wee eyelets, and this tie as well. The eyelets you can do with the you get can get pliers and you also um, you can do them with a hammer, so you get the little sets that you hit with a hammer. They're actually really easy to put in. They're not, not too much trouble at all. Right, onto the tie. All I've got here is a strip of fabric that is about four centimetres wide. The, the pattern actually calls for leather, like a bit of a leather to tie around um, to make the wee drawstring bit. I wanted mine to be in the same fabric, so I'm not using leather. You can use ribbon or you could use bias binding. You don't have to make your own, but I'll show you how to do it because it is quite handy to know how to do it. The length of this piece doesn't matter too much. Mine is probably about 65, 70 long, quite long. Um, it's not functional. It's purely just to look like you've got a drawstring in there, um, so it doesn't actually matter how long it is. I'd say minimum 60 centimetres long and four centimetres being the, the minimum width as well. With right sides together, fold this in half and pop some pins in it. Pop some pins all the way along. Oh, sorry if you can hear the dog now barking outside. 
in some other neighbourhood dogs going bananas out there and she started joining them. It's quite a wacky wee thing. If you want to iron this in half to make it easier by the way, you absolutely can. Okay, so pinned it. What we want to do is I'm going to stitch down this end here and then along, all the way along, leaving the other end open. Bonus points there if anybody noticed that I was putting my pins in the wrong direction. I was doing it on purpose just to see if you were all still awake. No, that was genuinely a mistake. Sometimes that does happen, but I just took them out early. Not a problem. So I've stitched along this top edge here and I've left this edge open. This edge is closed and now I want to turn this out. Uh, I stitched about a centimetre in from my edge as well, in case you're wondering what the seam allowance was on this. This wee tool is an app absolute dream when it comes to turning out these um, kind of ties and loops. It's a bit like a roulette loop except I haven't cut this piece on the bias. Um, I didn't want to waste too much fabric. This wee guy is called a loop turner. It's got a hook at the end, tiny wee hook. So just pop your loop turner in here. Thread it right through. And you want to catch the wee, there's a wee hook here, and you want that hook to catch onto a thread or a little bit of the fabric so that we can pull this through and out to the right side. So, caught that wee bit. This is quite tricky, by the way. Um, but it's, there's no other option for getting something this fine turned out. You could potentially trim your seam allowance a wee bit actually. Might make it easier but once you get it started it's a lot easier and it just starts to turn inside out dead easy. So just keep pulling it like that and then once that ends out you can get rid of your loop turner just be careful of the fabric all kind of bumfling up here because that will stop it from turning out. Just keep turning it out. Nearly there. And there we go, we've got a nice little tie for our trousers. This wee edge that's open, it's frayed actually, so I'm going to just trim that and then turn that edge in on itself and we're just going to stitch that closed so we don't have any raw edges. I'm going to use a pin to just push that edge in which will make it easier to sew. Wee fiddly bit here. And then you can just do a wee stitch over that edge. Okay, so I've threaded my tie through my two eyelets. And I'm just going to tie a wee knot in either end so that they don't come out. Just like that. There we go. And with the waistband, we are going to fold it in half lengthways. So just like that. I'm just going to pop, I'll pop some pins in. Open your seam allowances. 
fold that like that and we're going to be stitching all the way around just to secure this and make it into a waistband. Okay, so I have stitched my waistband so it's like one waistband now. There is of course this wee gap that we left earlier so that I can thread the elastic through later. Grab your trousers and find the waistband, get the front nearest you, so I'm just going to, here's my front side seam, my front seam, sorry, my back seam is here, my two wee pockets are here and here, so I'm just going to sit that like that there, and then I'm going to place my waistband over the top, now what you want is the right sides together here, so the right sides is the bit that has the eyelets, so the eyelets are the very front, so match this bit here to the very front seam. And I would open this seam allowance as well if you can. And pin that in place. Okay. And then match the back. So open this right up like that. And pin the back piece to the waistband. And then let's do the sides as well. Side. And then just keep pinning it all along there and you want to stitch that in place with your one centimetre. See now it's Always fold the darts towards the side seam, so out the way. Okay, and then you can stitch that. Right, waistband is on. What I've also done is r just run over that with the overlocker. Um, this fabric's quite free, so we don't want it fraying once we're wearing them. For your elastic, I have cut this elastic to what I know will be comfortable around my waist. Um, it is, this pattern sits quite high, so just pull the elastic around your waist, give yourself a little bit extra and cut it to size. And then this is what you're threading through. I've got a big safety pin. I'm just going to pop on the end of my elastic. And then I'm going to find there's the space there. And I'm going to start threading this through. This one does quite satisfying. Thread and elastic through. It totally changes how the garment looks, I think. Just keep pulling it through until you get right back to the start. Oh, I 
think the fact that this is interfaced on the inside makes it a little bit easier. You can think it to really catch on or uh, the, the fabric's quite firm with the interfacing on it, so that helps a lot here. Right, back to the start, out you come. Okay, now crucially, what you don't want is for this to be twisted. So, I'm going to just safety pin these two ends together so that I don't lose the ends and I'm going to make sure they're not twisted before I stitch them together. And I'm going to move the excess fabric as well. I'm trying to pull this bit of elastic into it. There we go. quite gallant at the front and not very gallant at the back so just try and move the excess fabric around so that it's evenly distributed and then how cute is that? Little masticated waist. Okay so once it's looking all, all good like this and it's not twisted because that's sitting flat nice and happy. So I'm really happy with that. I'm going to pull the elastic out. Quite a bit actually. Because I need to get it in my machine flat like this. And then I'm going to do some zigzags to secure these bits of elastic. So we've stitched these together so we've got one loop here. I'm just going to pull this in to my waistband. And all we need to do to close this up is a wee hand stitch. So that, that elastic doesn't show. Just to close that up on the inside. Then the only thing that's left to do is pretty much exactly the same on your cuffs here. So you want to press in a wee centimetre and then fold it again to create a channel in exactly the same way that we've just done with the the waistband there. With regard to how much you need, again I just wrapped it round my ankle and thought that feels okay and that's how much I used and then you thread it through in exactly the same way. Show you this pair. So this is the wee cuff at the bottom here. And like I said at the start, if you don't want to do the cuff, you don't have to, you can just hem it because they actually look quite nice without the cuff as well. So that is also an option. So I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any questions, uh, do let us know. You can message the Sewing Street Instagram or my Instagram. I'm so confident. I am so confident Jenny as well on Instagram. Um, I'm on there all the time so I can answer any questions you have about this pattern or about the fabric or about any of the notions. Just let me know. And I would love to see your, your finished trousers or anything else that you make out of this book. It's fab. Lovely sewing with you today. I'll see you all later. Oh, that was lovely to see Jenny, wasn't it? Like, it was absolutely... She, I love her top as well. I know I loved all the things she was making, but I was having a nosy round her actual workroom and what she was wearing and a... a well, I don't know if they're new glasses, but they're new to me. So, they were lovely. Um, also, this book is the book she was working for. Them. It's brand new today. Um, it's, a kind, it's a capsule wardrobe. I was going to say kind of a capsule wardrobe. It is a capsule wardrobe. Um, there's a variation of different skills in there that you can learn, different levels that you're at. Um, obviously, we were doing with Jenny. Sorry, Joe. Um, I can't, can't open pages. Um, it's all about your fitting and your drafting in there. Loads of key points in there, which I particularly found very useful when I was having a flick through. Um, oh. And these are the trousers. Oh, okay. Um, these are the trousers that we saw Jenny making there. Um, there is full size pattern pieces in the back, and I know Jenny spoke about she used a uh, heat erasable pen to 
highlight hers out, but also maybe if you know your size variation, using an actual highlighter as well to highlight on there might make it even clearer for you. They are quite clear, but they are quite overwhelming. Nice quality paper as well, so you're able to use them again. You actually get six full-size graded patterns in there. Um, another bit, there's lots of things in this book. Absolutely gorgeous broken down. I love that dress. Um, things that are a bit more complex in there, using a look at the trench suit to make a suit. Trench suit, trench coat to make a suit. Um, so that might be something to work towards. Um, one bit I particularly like, we get to Sunday and a little treat in there. Uh, there's bags, actually. Little bags at the back, using some PU there. So I think it's good to think about your accessories and everything in there, isn't it? In it. Don't think that's very television to say in it, is it? Um, <laughs> I know. Um, lovely book, brand new today. Um, I think it's beautiful. Whether you're new to dressmaking or you are a prevalent dressmaker, would that be the right word? You regularly dressmake and you just want some new patterns to maybe hack and work into. There's lots of tips and tricks in here. We saw Jenny use it. These are the trousers that Jenny made. I can't model them very well with the table in front, but they are absolutely gorgeous. They are in brand new fabric. This is, um, I'm just going to call it the polka dot in green, but um, we sell this by the half meter. It's 145 wide um, and it's 100% polyester uh, crepe, but it's a crepe with a texture. Is it a popcorn crepe? No, that's a different one. Uh, but it's a textured crepe, basically. Bubble. Um, so it feels very nice there. Um, it's quite lightweight, so... I don't know. I'm not a dressmaker, but what I hear from all these shows is that it can, you know, you want, maybe you want a bit more structure to work with your first kind of project. But I'd give it a go, you know. I don't, maybe don't hold me to that. Um, this is Bertie, strange name, beautiful fabric though. Um, again, half metre. Um, this was again 100% polyester, but it's woven differently. It's a slightly heavier weight. Um, absolutely gorgeous. I think it would work. Look, with a nice little black top. Um, just whizzing through these because I know I can talk, apparently. Also, if you are spending over £50 in one transaction today, um, that means that all the things in your basket or one item adds up to or goes over £50. Uh, put in the code Hannah and you can get ten pounds off. There's me. Um, so we're trying to let you know. Oh, I know I didn't change. I came in all dressed. Um, I know that often we say to check out all the time on different things that are low in stock. But we're trying to let you know when they are low on stock, so you could kind of add your basket up to the fifty pounds and use the code. Yes, you are meant to be telling me that, Joe. I had a quick look at the break. This is the fabric that Jenny used in her demo, and personally, this is my favourite. This is a viscose. It's a brushed viscose as well, so it's lovely soft on the skin. Um, I actually think, whether you're making that or something else, I would get this. Um, I would quite like, like, a drapey kind of coat in it. But, like, you know, like a... I don't know, John Scott would be making fun of me now for my lack of words, but kind of like a throw-on jacket. Yeah, I don't know what that is, but it is lovely and soft, so I just love it. Um, right, there's also a few tools and things we saw her use. First of all, the elastic, which is obviously in the waistband and at the bottom of the legs. So I was going to lift my leg up then. Don't do that on telly. You're wearing a skirt. Um, so here you get... How much is in the pack? It's polyester less than one metre. Pardon? Yes, it will be. It's ended, code sending 64. Um, VJZW64. Have you got that? Joe just does the graphics. This is on the website because I've seen it, but it's there. I'll put it there. We'll sort that one out in a second. Iron-on interfacing, really useful with some of your lighter weight fabrics. Um, just feeling for it. I did see Jenny had already covered some of her bits in that. Have you got... OK, I don't know where you haven't got these graphics from. It is WXZW38. You have got it. There's a metre square in this packet. Hemline. Can be used for lots of things in general. 
you need the code? Useful in your stash in general, um, whether you do a lot of dressmaking for collars and cuffs and things, but iron on interfacing. Um, then we saw um, the eyelets, which are obviously used up here for your tightening. Um, well, it's not actually for your tightening, it's for the illusion that this is pulling it tighter, but for the elasticated waist. Um, so you've got the packet here with the punch tool. Yeah, start to get... Oh, yeah, forgot about the cameras needing to see things. Um, you get your actual tool in here, so when you're actually done with your eyelets, keep this tool in the middle. Do you have the graphic, Joe? Fantastic. You also need a hammer um, with this one. If I had a hammer, is there a song? Oh, I'm not going to start singing the song. Um, these are your refills for the eyelets. Whether you're doing this project or maybe bag making or something, it's quite nice to get these bits and bobs. Yeah, well, I think we're going to go to a break now. Um, and then we're going to come back after the break. We have some Tilda and we have uh, some Shadow Applique as well. Okay, I'm just going to go off with Jenny's trousers now and try them on. But anyway, okay, all right then. Bye. See you after the break. Hello there, I'm Debbie. And this is my brand new Sewing Room Secrets quilting book, which is available exclusively signed on Sewing Street right now. So if you haven't seen any of the shows or caught up on YouTube, let me give you a quick flick through. Because in here, I'm going to teach beginner sewers or beginner quilters all about quilting, different types of quilting, different techniques for quilting and for binding your quilts as well. But not necessarily quilts that go on a bed. There's a quilted uh, Christmas stocking tutorial, there's a quilted placemat tutorial, a quilted storage hanger tutorial. So very simple achievable products uh, for the beginner quilter to learn how to sew. So you can't buy this anywhere else at the moment. You certainly can't buy it anywhere else even on pre-order with a signed copy but you can get hold of them right now on Sewing Street while we have the stock. You can order on the website, you can order on the, on the phone lines. I do hope you enjoy it. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers Landing Page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the Watch Live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Hello everyone, I'm Delphine. I'm really excited to be here back on Sewing Street and back in the studio. I'm a mixed media artist and also a sewer. I really enjoy applique, quilting, I also like drawing and needle felting and embroidery. I'm really excited to share with you a few more projects, including some needle felting and embroidery projects and some applique work as well. I'm really excited to be back on and I hope to see you soon. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday.
Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hi, I'm Hannah. Um, I'm normally the producer upstairs if you've only just started watching. Um, today I'm presenting, John's meant to be in. Unfortunately his car's broken down. He's perfectly fine, he's safe and everything, but he just couldn't get in. So you've got me, I'm afraid. But as a little bit of a consolation prize, we're actually doing some money off. If you spend over 50 pounds in one transaction, so that's either an item that's 50 pounds or over, or several things that add up to 50 pounds or over in your basket, when you come to check out, use the code Hannah. Um, and you get £10 off. So there's been a lot of people using that today. We're trying to let you know when things are low in stock or out of stock, um, if we're mentioning them. For example, the Orofil is now out of stock, um, just because normally we encourage you to check out more regularly, but I want you to take advantage of the offer because you've got to listen to me for a lot of time. Um, a little bit of light relief. If we, go. Um, we are going to see a demo from the lovely Alison on Shadow Applique. Um, We've got a couple of kits that are actually brought to us by her, so you get exactly what you need in them, which is absolutely brilliant. Shadow Applique has kind of got this kind of layer over the top of Organza, which I'm going to try and get Joe to show. It's, it's absolutely beautiful in real life, and I don't think it does, just balancing on this cushion here, does, the, uh, does it justice enough. So what you are getting is you're getting the actual Organza. Oh, look, I'm trying to move it around a bit. So if you think if that was like in a conservatory or in a bedroom with little lights on it, it would absolutely look gorgeous. Anyway, and then I'm just going to show the other one. And we've got one other design here. This is the Daisy Duo. You're getting exactly these fabrics in your kit. Again, with that organza. Sorry, Joe. It's me and Joe today. Joe's the director and cameraman, and he's really got to run backwards and forwards. We're a limited team. Fantastic. So gorgeous. It's hard to show you that organza, but it really sparkles and twinkles, I think is the word, rather than sparkles. Do you know what I mean? It adds, and it's very soft as well. It's not like a rough organza. It's not like a cushion that's going to be on the sofa that you're not going to want to sit on. It's still, still nice. I'm going to start with Daisy Duo, which we have seen these kits before, and this was the most popular. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, to me. I'm learning my left and rights for Joe, so we'll see this on the overhead. Um, so these are instructions from Alison, um, and you're getting your full, full, well, I was gonna call it pattern, but it's more your full size template. Obviously, it's half and half. So there we go. You've got instructions there. Also, all of our demos go onto YouTube after the show. So when you do get your kit home, it's a really great resource to be able to play that YouTube back and kind of, even if not using the, all the tips, it's nice to have someone else there in the workroom with you as well. And you know, we don't, we're not seeing everyone at the moment. Um, yeah, Alison has actually pre-cut all of these kits for us. I'm not gonna show you all of it, but I'm just gonna show you some of the fabric in there. You are getting exactly the same that's in the cushion. So you'll be able to follow it word for word, or that would be the wrong one. Fabric for fabric. So you've got your organza in there, you've got lovely ditzy rose, You've got enough, like, we can't always offer with kits that we do those kind of exactly the right amount. So it's great that Alison's got that in here and it keeps the cost down for you guys as well because you've got exactly what you need there. Not, it's great to have some in your stash, but, you know, we've all got stashes. It's nice to get going and have the right amounts. Um, you've got all your cottons in there for the actual cushion. You've got your... Um, like your glue interfacing. I was going to say it's a bond web. I think it is a heavy duty bond web. And you've got some of your polyester wadding for um, quilting the front as well. So the, the kits are very thorough. And alongside actually having instructions, the demo that Alison's going to do now and the ability to watch it back in YouTube, you're not going to be left alone at any point. And if you don't want to watch it, then, so then you can be left alone. Don't know why I needed to make that point. Hello, Blossom. 
is the next cushion. Again, you are getting exactly these fabrics and you're getting enough to do the cushion. You can't really see. The organza is absolutely beautiful and I'm just imagining in kind of conservatory, maybe with little fairy lights around as well. It would look gorgeous. Yeah, it does. And it isn't, I think of organza sometimes is it could be quite like scratchy. And then I'm like, I don't really want that on a cushion. I fall asleep everywhere. Like I actually think I'm part sloth. So my cushions have to be practical too. And envelope back, brilliant. No zip on the face. And nice, soft cushion front that's also beautiful. Um, and I think that is the quality of these fabrics that as Alison has sourced in her um, bundles that have been cut specially for these projects. So again, everything you need in there. This looks a bit boring, but you know, you need a base to the cushion. Um, and then the exact same fabrics. Again, I want to say word for word, but I need a new phrase for that for fabric, I think. Um, and then your full instructions. Ex oh, they're ready for you. From Alison. Should we see Alison demoing these now? I want to sh I'm going to get something to stand these up when we're on the break. Um, well, not break, video. Video break. Um, let's go to Alison now doing shadow applique. Hi everyone. My name is Alison Marion. Welcome to my workspace. I'm very lucky because to my left I have my lovely garden and to my right the view is my lovely fabric stash. And in the corner sat making a few cards is my mum. Say hi mum. Hi. Hi mum. No. <laughs> Today I'm going to demonstrate the shadow applique cushions. It's a technique that is an applique design overlaid with a sheer or translucent fabric which softens both the shape and the colour. It came to Europe in the 18th century uh, from India, I believe, and it was, it was popular for decorating handkerchiefs, collars, doilies cushions and, and nice little sachets, things like that. So it's a decorative technique. I can remember having a little collar on a dress of my daughter, not realising that's what it was, but that was a shadow of PK and it was on a nice little Peter Pan collar. The kids come complete with everything you need to make the cushion other than your cushion pad and the thread. We'll talk about the thread a little later on. So both both of the kits are pretty much the same. There's a couple of little differences. So you can't, you start off, you've got your fabrics for your applique, whichever one that you want to do. And then we've got your organza layer, which is your top layer that gives you your lovely sheer. 100% cotton, then a two ounce wadding. It's a polyester wadding and a cotton voile. The reason this is thin is because I personally like to hand sew round the applique. So the least resistance to your needle, the better. So the thinner, the backing fabric. It doesn't actually show on the cushion when it's completed. It's just, just holding everything together. So that's your start. That's everything you need. The one thing that's different with the, the daisy because you've got your different colours on the front, you've got your two pieces and you need to sew those two together. So your seam is then pressed towards the darkest side and then you just treat that as the one piece of fabric. The applique is actually put on your main fabric with fusel web. If you haven't used this before, it's a lovely iron-on transfer fabric to fabric. So what you do is you follow out all your pattern from your instructions and you need to trace around every piece that you're going to need on your design. So we've got the different coloured ones marked out here. So you've got this piece of, and you've got your different colours and you cut them out so that you're leaving a little border all the way around the outside edge and then you can fuse it to the back of your fabric. Once you've drawn around and cut around your pattern pieces then you put your bubbly side 
down onto the back of your fabric and you're just going to press that normally about 10 seconds is enough you use a dry iron no steam and that should be plenty then to keep it down so that you can fuse it so when you've finished that you take your scissors and actually cut out the shape so you cut around your line and you'll end up with your piece that's going to be fused onto your cushion top so one of the easiest ways to get the backing paper off is to just take your scissors the number of hours I've spent trying to get it away from this side and then starting up all the edge going funny so you just pull off the backing paper which leaves the the glue section then you're going to on your cushion front the best way to do it is to put lay down all your pieces to make sure that they're in the right order so you'd have your little blossom here and then you'd put your green stems and your leaves so that you know you're putting them in the right place and the layout is right but this is exactly the same as when we were doing the piece on the pattern fabric now we're just going to about 10 seconds leave that on and then that's fused to your cushion top so you put you now put your your stems in and your leaves your center and you would end up with your full cushion front then it comes to the sandwiching you start off with your organza over the top of your main fabric with your pattern that's already fused on it and then you've got your wadding and your cotton foil so once that's all sandwiched together you just tack all the way around the outside so it can be homeward bounders it doesn't matter it's not going to be seen it's going to be taken out all it's doing is holding all the layers together so the next thing is to decorate around the outside edge of the applique i personally like to use a silk thread for my hand stitching as you can see it's really really fine and it's so fine that i actually knot it onto the needle i've got a quilting needle but if you don't knot it 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 is so fine that it does tend to come out but once i've knotted it on then i'll run it through some beeswax that helps to stop it all bunching up and knotting and you can see if i put the needle through that there's no trouble at all with it coming through with the knot and it's going through nice and smoothly so that's my stitch of choice around the outside you can't see even though this is a a different colour I ran out of white but this is a different colour because it's so fine you can't actually see any of the stitching if you don't want to hand sew because I, I quite like the bubbly kind of look but if you want a machine stitch there's no reason why you can't it gives a totally different look but this has been machine stitch you can see the stitch but that might be what you like or also this has been hand stitched but I haven't used the silk thread I've actually used a coloured thread I've used green around the stems and the leaves pink around the flower and yellow around the centre so you can see on the back look the different colours so that's another look you can actually see the stitches on this one but not a great deal also if you want to put some piping this is i didn't have any um piping to put through 
this, this is a little bit of um, bias binding that I had if you wanted to put around the outside of your cushion. That's another way of finishing off and making it a little bit different. If you do decide on hand stitching around your applique, it's just a simple running stitch all the way around the outside edge. I'll show you on the back of this one because I've done this one in a coloured thread. And at the point where I change direction, I do a little back stitch because that holds the tension nicely all the way around the outside. So I would also do a back stitch at the point where the leaf leaves the stem and also at the top point of the leaf. And it gives you a nice tension all the way around your your pattern. One thing that I would say is when you're assembling and you on your final stitching, make sure that you haven't got any pieces underneath your organza in your sandwich between your organza and your main piece because that would annoy me immensely every time I looked at the cushion. So you do have to be aware to make sure that you haven't got any pieces of thread or fabric in your sandwich between your top and your organza. From your main fabric with the kit, you cut out two pieces 45 by 30 centimetres. And these are your pieces for your envelope back. So along the one of the 45 centimetre line edges on both of the pieces, you need to make yourself a fold to neaten off the edge. And when I'm, when I'm trying to turn fabric, rather than burn my fingers, I use a piece of card. I've marked where these are going to be and it makes it so much easier just to turn and press along the piece of card and you get a nice sharp, sharp finish on your hem, whatever you're doing. Obviously you can't do it on a, a round piece of fabric, but then I'm going to best press and just finish that off so that we've got a nice edge to hem and you'll do that on both pieces on just one of the 45 centimeter edges. I've stitched along the 45 centimeter edge on one side of each of the pieces so we've got a nice tidy hem and I've also trimmed the cushion front to a 45 centimetre square. This is the point where you can make sure that your design is actually central and you're going to trim off all the raggedy edges. So I've got my top and now I'm going to place my envelope back and I'm going to put it right side to right side. So I've got my cushion front up and my nice tidy edge that's going to go and lay right side to right side over the cushion front then the other one on the other side and we're going to I'll just pin this so that you can see you've got a nice overlap there we go you've got a nice overlap there for your envelope back cushion. So now all I'm going to do is sew all the way around the outside edge, about a centimetre to a centimetre and a half, but I will make a point of at these points here where the fabric overlaps, because that's going to be a point that's pulled when you're putting in your cushion pad, I'm going to reinforce those pieces there. And also at the corners, when you reach to the point where you're nearly ready to turn, I leave my needle down and take two stitches on an angle before I start to turn and then start to go down the other side. And that way, by doing those two small stitches, you get a nice point. It seems daft because you would expect that if you had a good point. But the thing is, if you 
just do a right angle there you're going to have a rounded corner because you can't push it through properly but by doing the little diagonal stitches that helps it turn through nicely so I'll sew round there and be back so I sewn all the way around the outside edge and I reinforced at the points where the cushion pad's going to pull this open so now what I'm going to do is to just clip off the corners quite close but not too close to your stitching remembering that I've taken two stitches on an angle there and then all we do is turn it inside out now sometimes on envelope back cushions I do put snaps or buttons it depends really on the kind of cushion pad you're putting in this is a feather one and it doesn't pull the cushion pad out of shape but sometimes if you put too large a cushion pad in it can actually pull the cushion out of shape so that you need to pull the two center pieces on the back together but I'll, I'll turn this out and then I'll show you what I mean about taking those two two stitches out on the corner making a lovely square whereas if you were to go to the point this little part here would be quite rounded so it seems silly that you take an angle to get a nice square but that's how you do it so now we've got the completed cushion cover but what I've got to do now is to remove all my homeward bounders tell I'm a naval officer's daughter because it's a naval saying homeward bounders. Does anyone else use that saying? So there we go, that's all the tacking stitches out. All that's left to do is to just put in the cushion pad and I'll show you both of them together then. There we are, that's both of them finished. We've got the envelope back. As I said, you can, if you want to, add buttons at the back or snaps. I've used both in the past, but it's not absolutely necessary. The only things that I would say would be helpful with this project is a walking foot on your machine. Because you've got so many layers, you've got the organza, the main, your wadding and your voil, that's four layers it's really helpful to be able to feed the top and the uh, and the underside together as it will move. So a walking foot is helpful. So apart from that, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you will have a go. Nice, easy project if it's your first applique project. So all I can say now is keep calm and carry on sewing. Goodbye. Oh, thanks, Alison. That was lovely. I like your mug at the end. And I also like your little tips, like don't get other bits of fabric stuck in your organza because that would annoy me as well. Um, I hope you guys at home loved the demo and hopefully we'll get to meet Alison in person soon. This is, it's nice to meet new guests, but we're not really meeting them. Do you know what I mean? So who do I get to know, I'm sure, in the future? Um, so the first kit I'm just going to show you is the Hello Blossom. Um, Again, it's trying to show that beautiful organza. I can't explain. Oh, this is where it's testing my skills. Um, basically, there's a layer of beautiful organza. It isn't like a, it's a really good quality. It's not a rough, coarse organza. So I think maybe beautiful in a conservatory, having a nap, I'm going with. Um, lovely fabrics as well. These are exactly the fabrics you're going to get to make the cushion. Um, it, the kit includes even um, your bondweb. It's a a, bond, a type of bondweb um, and your polyester to quilt the fr um, to quilt the front area. Yeah. Oh look there. I just think catching light. It's absolutely gorgeous and it isn't harsh on your. I keep on saying your face. Uh, that's all I'm going to do is sleep, apparently, as soon as there's a cushion. Um, so that's the first one, Hello Blossom. Get your full instructions, along with the show, will be on YouTube and your templates there for your applique. There we go. 
Duo Daisy next. I'm going to leave this one on the stand because it's quite precarious. I'll just move it in. Uh, this is Duo Daisy. Again, you get your templates and your instructions. Um, full instructions there, along with the show being on YouTube. As always, I will go on about it because I think it's a really great resource to be able to watch it when you get your kit home, watch it at your leisure, watch it even if you're not watching it and it's just someone in the background that's also in your workroom doing the same thing. A little helpful hint uh, that isn't distracting, uh, hopefully. Um, Daisy Duo, full instructions. Again, everything is sourced by Alison in this kit to make exactly what you see here. Um, amazing quality. I've gone on about the organza, but I think it isn't. I think you might hear organza and think scratchy, and it isn't in any way. Um, I was trying to tell Joe about ballet kits in the break. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a scratchy ballet kit. My parents obviously didn't invest in my ballet career. Um, so you get everything in there, including the fabric to make your actual cushion itself. Gorgeous quality, everything you need to the T. Uh, you will just need to add thread and your cushion inner. So hopefully you can get going with that. I'm just going to remind you about a code today, because if you have not met me before, I'm Hannah. I'm actually the producer, so normally I'm behind the scenes. Um, but today I'm out here and there is a code. John unfortunately couldn't come in because his car's broken down. So it's a little bit of a consolation prize. When you spend 50 pounds on one single transaction, so that means one item over 60, or your whole basket adds 50. Sorry, I've just oh, put another tenner on there for some reason. Um, one item over 50, or if all the items in your basket add up to over 50 pounds. Use the code Hannah when you check out. And same backwards and forwards, interesting fact there, I like that one. Um, you get 10 pounds off. Um, equally, if you're calling up the customer service team, which is completely free, um, just say Hannah. Um, they should know what you mean. Um, if they're called Hannah, that's gonna overcomplicate things a lot, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, it's completely free and they are based in Redditch around the corner, so they should be able to help you. Um, I'm just now, me and Joe, when that VT was on, was pulled together some items that we just want to raise your awareness, and I'm not really sure I'm allowed to do this, but this code wasn't meant to be on. We obviously didn't know jo John's car was going to break down, so I might get into trouble for this. I'm not going to do any demos or anything, because no one wants to... No, that's too much for a first day presenting. Um, but I'm just going to let you know about some of those items if you're using your code. So this is the newest stripology ruler that we had. It launched on uh, Vicky's birthday and it's the extra large. Um, obviously, if you know about Creative Grids projects, you'll know the name, you'll know the quality that comes with them. They are rulers designed by quilters for quilters. Um, this is one we particularly go on about. I'm going to turn it over. Um, I don't know if you can see, but normally they come with, uh, John calls it dotage, um, but like a built-in grip that doesn't damage your fabric. It's normally in a dot. Here they put it on every strip that you need. And um, lots of you already know why. I will just briefly explain in a second. Doesn't damage your fabric, something unique to Creative Grids. Um, it makes it safer to use. Um, you've got extra stability. Um, here there's like a teardrop shape where you'll put your rotary cutter in. Don't know if it's better with a colour underneath, Joe. Um, I'll just put it on one section. That's okay. Uh, yeah, you can put your rotary cutter in, and then these allow you to then cut. Um, is it quarter of it? They have they have your increments there that you cut along, so you can do your strips for your uh, bargellos or making your own design rolls. But also there, you can do your own charm packs. It's just Really great resource for helping you cut um, consistently and with a clean cut. Um, I think a lot, especially as you do more and more quilting and patchwork, that is so important, your quarter of an inch seam allowance, the quality of your cutting, all of that kind of thing you want to match up because it, it aids the final result um, and you want it to look the best it can. So I think yeah, so yeah, you could do squaring up your blocks as well. There's so much with this ruler. I just, I didn't plan to do it. Obviously, I didn't plan to be presenting, but <laughs> I'm here. So I thought I would make the best of the situation. Use your code. 
There are now less than 20 of these rulers available. Some of you have already seen and worked out the over 60 pounds, which means it's over 50, which means you can take advantage of the deal. So do put Hannah at the checkout if you do want 10 pounds off on that. And I don't think we've had like a kind of deal on the extra large tripology. It's not just on that, but you know, yeah, it's a good one. Um, other things that me and Joe, when we were talking, I'm going to stay with creative grids actually, and these aren't over 50, but these are a great pass to start your kind of creative grid collection. Um, this is the 24 and a half inch by eight, eight and a half inch. And um, no, it's not. Joe, that's the stripology. Gosh, I know. Um, so again, this could be your one of your first rulers. And I know that is a considered purchase for a first ruler. There are other rulers of this size out there at more affordable prices. That's fine. That's fine. That sounds like a vote. If you want to do that, do that. Um, we mainly, I think, we only at the moment work with Creative Grids here because we love the products themselves. And I understand maybe if you're starting a new hobby, you don't want to make that investment straight away. But the safety features that come with them, I think, will encourage you to quilt longer because you've got the, the non-stip grip there. And I think it's quite daunting. I haven't got a rotary cutter here. I haven't got this. I think a rotary cutter, I'm just going to, I'm not going to cut anything because Joe will shout at me and I haven't got a cutting mat. But a rotary cutter has been quite daunting with that blade and you may have always used scissors and things like that. But again, you're getting that quality by using a rotary cutter and a good quality ruler together. Um, and you can cut through multiple layers. That grip is the table will move because these tables move. <laughs> but the ruler doesn't. Um, this is a good one to start with. If you are getting your half a metre of fabric, it means you can cut off your selvage, no problem at all. Um, again, this is 31 99 so if you do want to go over your over 50 um, to get your £10 off, you just add a few bit more bits to your order, if you want. Early bird. Uh, maybe you want a, one of the cushion kits from Alison. And yeah, like, there's, there's no pressure. It's just kind of making you aware we weren't even meant to have this deal today. So, you know, um, this is a slightly smaller one, which is your 12 and a half by six and a half. Gosh, I couldn't read the numbers, so that was the other way around. Um, again, Creative Grids. Um, this is obviously one of your kind of staple rectangle rulers. You're not going to have all the Creative Grids to start with. You are going to add to your collection. So... You've got all your measurements on here in black and white, so you can see on different fabrics. I think the grey shows up both quite well, but when you work with really dark fabrics, it's going to be more difficult to see your black markings. Again, you've got your grip. This one, maybe you've not got enough, as much storage space, or maybe, maybe you've already got the bigger ruler, and as you start to work on smaller projects, or as you, you've just found that one a bit cumbersome when you're cutting down blocks or things like that. It is, I think as you start going through, you'll realize as we show at all, you'll go, oh my God, that would really help me. So I just, I, this is another one we find really popular and it might be your first ruler. It might be you giving Creative Grids a go. It's a useful, um, a useful one to have a look into. Um, biscuits. I'm moving on, Joe. if that's okay. Joe's my director. I'm um, very much telling him what to do today. Um, this is your Fisker cutter and com... I call it the guillotine. It's a rotary cutter and ruler combo tool. Um, so again, it's got that 24 and a half inch um, length, like the ruler. So again, selvage to selvage. But with this one, if you aren't if you aren't confident with your rotary cutter, this is going to help you a lot because you can place it down left or right handed. And I'm not going to cut because I haven't got a cutting mat here. But then this, you push this down and it, it means that you've lined up on the ruler here and you're cutting. I've done that the wrong way around. You line up on the ruler and then you're cutting. That's a rookie mistake there. Yeah, this is the thing like I'm the blade is in here. I can't, I'm not the best at showing. 
or this is a test for me. Oh, Joe's coming in closer. Basically, it's a normal 45 mil blade. It isn't, um, isn't something you'll buy and then you're gonna struggle to find replacements. It takes a regular 45 mil blade, obviously be safe when you're changing it and change it as much as you would change your rotary cutter. Maybe you change it per project. I think that differs from different fabrics you're using and how often you're using it and how many layers you're cutting. Um, but as you press down, it exposes, engages the blade, engages is the good word. So you know that it's always enclosed. So if you are nervous about ro working with rotary cutters, if you haven't got the steadiest of hands, or you also, you know, have a dexterity issue that means that actually working with a rotary cutter and a ruler isn't always the easiest for you, this is something that's gonna definitely help you. And multiple, multiple layers, I think, is a, definitely one you can feel more secure obviously work up to it but because everything's all built in and it's in place for you I think cutting through multiple layers you might feel more secure you might find you feel more secure using this to start with yeah you're not it's not lots of elements at once if that makes sense um again 64.99 just thought I didn't do it didn't do a demo you'll notice Hayley will probably have a go at me for that um who's my boss but um, just thought I'd let you know because you can use our £50 code today which means if you spend £50 or more in one transaction I can see myself through my body Joe. oh that's freaky isn't it why am I disappearing oh my gosh that's like um, like I am only seen at night and then at the daytime I anyway anyway I'm sure there's a film like that I'll I'll do that in my own time. Um, basically, if you use the code spending £50 or more in one transaction, use the word Hannah and you can get £10 off. Yeah, Joe, I messed things up. Um, right, I am now going to do the barley pop. We've not got long. Again, in my and Joe's little route around for our favourite bits, as it were, um, <laughs> maybe that's not a phrase to use on telly. Uh, anyway, let's ignore that. We had we had a look through our stash in the studio, um, and we had my favourite barley pop here. So again, it's not to your fifty pounds, but if you're checking out on something else, be aware of the code or just get it. Um, this is the blues. There is other colourways on the web, but I'm just going to show you this. I love barley pop, and I like this technique. Yeah, I just had to sing it in a, uh, a song for some reason. Um, these all hand dyed in barley, um, so they are all slightly different from one another. Obviously, they all have this spot pattern, but the and you'll still have that rainbow of blues, but this kind of mottled effect will be different on every single one, which is what I love about them. Um, and I, I love that it's a traditional, um, a traditional process. So you get 40... Um, two inch strips um, I'm just showing you some of the colors here look at that that looks I know these are all well little under the sea kind of theme I was gonna sing um, Little Mermaid then I'm not but this reminds me of space I just think they're all gorgeous together whether you someone's phone's on that might be my phone oh gosh I'm very professional um, they Oh, I've been really put off by my phone going off because I know how naughty it is to have my phone on. <laughs> I feel like I need to tell told off. Um, what's in the studio? It's by my salad, Joe. Um, no one calls me, it's fine. Um, basically, you get all these lovely colours. I've been really put off by my own misbehaving because that's so naughty to have my phone on. <laughs> Joe's going to tell me off after the show. Um, lovely colours, lots of projects you have in mind. You can, you, I have in mind for these, if they let me have them. Um, <laughs> whether, whether you start, um, whether you start, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to have to tell Joe the code for my phone. Oh, it's 1991. Yeah, so you can log in. You get 40 pieces. I can't, it's beautiful. There we go. I'm going to get told off for having my phone on. <laughs> live in fear um but just thought i'd let you know and also just kind of do a little reminder take advantage of this offer that we didn't know we were doing have a look on the web shop has there been a few bits you've been thinking about getting 
Right, we've got 10 minutes. Right, it's complete other end of the spectrum, as it were. But uh, we have solid colours on the web. Um, we always have a solid kind of, I want to call them blender fabrics. They're not just blenders because they aren't just quilting. They're just our solid 100% uh, cottons, basically. They're what we call quilting weight. So uh, they're what we call, everyone calls quilting weight. So they're slightly heavier than a poplin. Uh, they're really great for quilting. They can be used for your bag making. They can be used for your home projects. They can be used for dressmaking if you have a suitable pattern. Um, but we have a whole range of colours which we always restock. So again, it's worth taking a look on our website. Um, you can scroll down underneath where our show is and there's also a categories area. Um, these are some of the colourways that I particularly liked and picked out for you today. Yeah, let's start with cream. Yeah. Yes. Has it? Whoa! Okay, so just a little fact for you. This is normally what I'm looking at on the computer upstairs, um, but Joe's doing it as well today. Many, a, a, ja a jam? A man! Not a jam. A man of many talents. Um, apparently, cream cotton canvas, which I've not even shown. That's. Oh, I can't even. Yeah, loads of people checked out on that, like a lot so we're actually only down to nine units of cream cotton canvas now so a lot of you at least you've been going onto the web and having a look and seeing what you've been waiting to get but well done i get no i get nothing for that because i didn't show it i don't get anything anyway <laughs> anyway um this is our quilting weight cotton this is cream as well You're... yeah I'm not going to hold it, this is half of it. I'll hold up one of the other colours because it's not very great to look at. Uh, but they're all three, 49 and a half metre for these uh, quilting weight cottons. So uh, again, half a metre is that price. And then multiple units, two metres would be four units. Fantastic, I wasn't going to do the maths then. I, I kind of waited as if I was going to and I didn't. Grey, please not folding them up correctly I won't open up this one silver um, we are actually news hot off the press very limited in all of our solid grey cotton canvases um, and that's not just us that is us talking to suppliers um, so in general I would just be aware that there may be unless something changes a grey shortage in the near future which sounds ridiculous <laughs> But at the moment, we're finding difficult to source grey fabrics. Yeah, backings and bindings, uh, we find a lot of people buying this for. Yeah, I think it it isn't as harsh as a white fabric or harsh as a dark kind of a black fabric. Do you know what I mean? So I think it's used a lot. It's very in and home interior in. God, who am I? Sound like Lawrence Rowan Bowen. Um, it's very, lots of homewares seem to have these kind of grey tones in, but just a little bit of news in the near future, it's not just us, but we're finding it difficult to source grey. Nice. Um, the, I'm going to call it lilac, and this is annoying when people call it the wrong name. What is it called? Because, oh, light lilac, come on now. Well, it is important for you guys at home. I went to go push my glasses on and I haven't got them on today. I normally wear glasses, so it's making me... I can't touch my face. Um, this is what a half metre look like, looks like. So if you do want multiple units, you know that this is what you're getting for your 349. Oh. Oh, I wasn't very good at the wafting and letting it drape down. I'm trying new elaborate things that Joe's trying to tell me to do, and I'm not very good. These are all the things I'm like, it's so easy. It's not easy to present, turns out. It's very difficult. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I meant to fold along these lines. I haven't. Um, I know, I'm gonna be putting it away anyway, it's fine. Can I do this light pink? This is pink. So if you are looking, of course. 
Um, again, these are just solid colours. You may have a project in mind. You may have a project that needs finishing. I'm just kind of... I just wanted... I'm going to pick this off. I just wanted to let you know about what we do always restock on the website and that's always there. Um, so we often pick these and put these into our bundles um, to say what would be nice together, what goes nicely with other fabrics. But it's nice for you to go and have a look if you've got a certain project in mind. They are always there when they're in stock. I'm not saying they don't sell out because they do, uh, but we always aim to restock them. So this is the last one I picked out, a lovely bright pink. Gorgeous. Oh yeah, I forget I'm showing everyone, not just me. Fantastic. Again, a massive thread there, isn't it? It's because I made a massive mess earlier. Um, whether you're doing a plique and you're putting this on there, maybe you get your shadow applique kit and you want to do even more. Oh yeah, pink backing. Be gorgeous. Yeah, backing. Oh yeah, I'm folding this one right. I just, oh, the folding nonsense goes on a bit here, doesn't it? Anyway, right, we've only got a few minutes left. I just would like to remind you once again, because that's what I do, of the offer today, because I think you all need a, a nice treat for having to listen to me present instead of the gorgeous John, who was meant to be here, but his car's broken down. Um, if you spend £50 in one single transaction, um, that £50 pounds all over, um, you can use the code HANNAH at checkout and get £10 off. That means that could be an item that's £50 pounds or more when you check out, or that can be multiple things that add up to £50 pounds or more. Yes, yes, we can see that. From that photo there, that was taken before the humid day has hit my head. And this is now. Before, after. Yeah, it's getting more and more wild, isn't it? I'm trying. It's also the fan. Just every weather condition doesn't get on with my hair. I'm not going to lie. Um, how many more minutes do I have? Because I can squeeze some things in. Can I squeeze in these, please? Bon Voyage Fat 8s from the newest Kilda range. I don't wanna open, I'm not going to open them up. And that is because I will make a mess that Joe will shout at me for. Fat 8s, yeah. A fat eighths is half of a fat quarter, um, just so you know. There's 20 pieces in here, so you're seeing the full collection. Oh, that's annoying. Buy some needles or something for the extra 1p and get the £10 off. Uh, but you've got a full selection of the patterns in it. I am going to just squeeze one of them out just to show you what a fat eighth is. This is Tilda's newest range. Oh, I can keep them in shot. This is Tilda's newest range. Um, it kind of inspired by... Um, her travels and that she collected lots of ceramics along the way. Oh, yeah, I'm learning left and right. I've stopped doing... Oh, so this is what you'll get of each fabric. So it's an... No, you went close. This is a lovely pattern that she's inspired. This is what you'll get of each fabric. We work well as a team, don't we, Jo? That's... Yes. <laughs> Um, so there's lovely gorgeous patterns in there. If you have seen the collection before, spend one more P on something. We don't have something for one P, but buy a bag of buttons and then get £10 off if you want it. I just think if you've been waiting and you do collect Tilda's, yeah, if you do collect Tilda ranges, a gorgeous way to add your collection. Um, the offer will end at midnight tonight. Uh, tomorrow you will have a normal presenter. Is it mixed tomorrow? Oh, it's a gorgeous mix tomorrow. Um, do you know what we're doing, Jo? Oh, we got fabric bundles in the first hour. Oh, Kerry is, we've got VT of Kerry and she's doing the craft clutch bag, which is gorgeous. I could see it from a distance the other day while I was doing some work. And tools and the Elna 680 Plus, which I know Vix loves that machine. Whenever we do get guests in the studio, that's the one they ask to use. Thank you so, so much if you've bared with me for the full day. <laughs> um, oh, don't forget to use your code before midnight. Um, I'll just enjoy your afternoon. Um, thank you for being so lovely and thank you for all your messages as well. I'm going to have a check on the web after the show. Thanks. <laughs>